is the Glass Cannon Network. Giant steps are what you take walking on the dune. Folks, welcome back to Inherit the Sand, episode four. I only got two of these left before I have to hand it off to Jared Logan. And my goal these next two episodes is to make it as difficult as possible for him to pick up the threads of this story. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I want to do. Just really make it uh, just impossible. Wipe out the entire party uh, so that he has to start fresh. Um, I think I've already started doing that. Uh, You killed a Harkonnen guard. Uh, That's not going to be overlooked. Um, So I'm interested to see where it's going to turn out. But this has been so much fun. I am so excited for these final two apps because today is going to hopefully bring us somewhere for this big conclusion next week. And then I move on. I'm, I'm put out to pasture and I get to just watch uh, you guys take over. Um, but speaking of uh, walking on the moon, uh, I'm a big Sting and police fan. Uh, seen Sting in concert a number of times. Uh, got to see the police when they reunited uh, very briefly um, sat in the last row of MSG it was like I gotta see the police but all I can afford is the worst ticket uh, at MSG what, what's, a, what's a really big concert you've seen that's like the most memorable concert that you can remember uh, Skid I'll start with you uh, I'm, I'm assuming two live crew <laughs> <laughs> no I, it's a big of a, uh, a two live crew fan as, as I was uh, I, I think the, my most memorable concert was also my first one in fifth grade. I went to the uh, Michael Jackson Victory Tour at Mile High Stadium. Get out of here. You that saw was, MJ? Uh, yeah, it was pretty spectacular. He was uh, good good at music stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He had his shortcomings, but music, <laughs> yeah. he seemed to be quite People good at. Issues with certain I things. don't think shortcomings <laughs> was the appropriate term to use there, that's, Troy. That's, that's the one yeah. that came to my head. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, I can imagine he put on a good concert. I was watching uh, highlights of his Super Bowl show uh, when the Super Bowl was on recently, and they were showing his Yeah, uh, that was like the show. first like actual Super Bowl halftime show that wasn't like up with people, <laughs> I think, was the Michael Jackson one. Yeah, so that was your first concert. Wow, mine was Boys to Men. Oh, not, uh, not not as memorable. Not not surprised. But we've talked about that on the show before. <laughs> uh, how they all got into a spaceship in the end, and the spaceship exploded, and they were no longer in the spaceship. That's how the Boys <laughs> to Men concert, which was opened by not only TLC but Montel Jordan as well. <laughs> wow, wow. TLC. what a lineup! How we do it? Yep. Uh, wow, legendary. I mean, there was some rapping going on before the stream started, and my claim to fame is specifically knowing Left Eye's whole rap. In waterfalls. That's I will so, not do wow. it here. You'd have to pay me a lot to do it, oh, but man. I can. One of the greatest uh, raps next ever karaoke in. night. I'm not yeah. I'm not gonna forget <laughs> as I adjust my wig. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. You should wrap I don't it up even by need the uh, lyrics on the wall. I don't you should know. wrap it up by burning down Andre Risen's house like she did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about you, Becca? Uh, fa- favorite concert or, or first concert? That might even be more exciting. First concert was a free concert in a parking lot of Hanson. Wow. Mm-ba. Wow. Wow. Mm-ba. Best concert. I got really drunk at a bluegrass festival one time. <laughs> <laughs> that I thought you were going to say drunk at a Hanson concert. I'm like, that would have been. <laughs> that, also yeah. Hanson. How fun would that be? Yeah. That was 11. <laughs> killed a jar of moonshine at the Hanson concert. <laughs> um, I love a show with a good laser light show. Uh, mm-hmm. And Alt-J. Alt-J mm-hmm. was dope. Mm-hmm. And the Greek... Which is an outdoor venue in Los Angeles, which is very beautiful. You can see mountains and such. Yeah, they don't do many laser shows anymore. Those are always fun. I remember going to the Museum of Science and they did a Pink Floyd laser light show. And I'm like, I don't appreciate this as much at eight years old as I would at 28. You Uh, said that when you were eight? (laughs) Yeah. It's like, well, I don't know why they're showing me this, but... Uh, I could see into the future and know that eventually mm-hmm. I'd enjoy it. Uh, Nora, but what about you? Big, uh, big concert goer? Um, not, I mean, not since the pandemic, but I, my 
most memorable, I think, concert moment was also my first concert. Hmm. Uh, and I think I was like a freshman and I there was like multiple bands, but the 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 last act of the night was Iggy Pop and he pulled me up on stage. Oh, uh, during the last number, which was I Want to Be Your Dog. And so we were singing and I oh, looked, I brought wow. my brother to this, like, I'm seeing my brother, super jealous, like that I'm on stage with Iggy Pop. And like, we're singing and dancing. I'm like with him in the last number. And so like, I look at Iggy and he looks at me and like, I look down on my brother and we're like, right. And we both just start pulling people up on stage. Like one person <laughs> after the security lost their damn minds. But by the end, there was like a big party on stage. Um, and it was like the most memorable concert moment of my life. <laughs> wow. That's like, <laughs> you're, like Courtney Cox kind of the, day. Uh, you're like Courtney Cox yeah. in the, the seconded by <laughs> What's that? Like Courtney Cox in the Springsteen video. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and then seconded by seeing somebody hurl a grapefruit and hit Snoop Dogg in the head at Lollapalooza. That's also oh. quite good. Oh, come on. I felt like he stopped Snoop? the concert and I know I was upset about it, but it was just like an odd, not like memorable, but it was just like one of those standout, like odd moments that like, you know, would imagine happen. But yeah. like. Yes, yeah, it's just something like you wouldn't forget ever seeing. But um, I yeah. feel like I should have Iggy ended Pop. with you. Who just gets pulled up? <laughs> on yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess my most memorable is when I did a couple uh, played backup bass for the Stones that one time. <laughs> 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 I opened for Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, uh, Pretty memorable. <laughs> What about you, Ross? Uh, I, I would, I would say you probably. It's going to be some band I've never heard of. <laughs> You've got I, uh, that face. Yeah, yeah, yeah he I does got that, that face. face. I got that face. I'm like, uh -huh. hmm, pretty pedestrian choices from the crew. No, <laughs> no, it's going to be a, it's going to be front door. a serious anticlimax after that amazing Iggy Pop story. Um, <laughs> but uh, also, props to Skid for throwing up uh, Sting as Fade Routha there. <laughs> oh hell yeah, this is my but, favorite uh, gift yes. on earth. But yeah. First, first, <laughs> ooh, first concert, first concert is like, I can remember is like watching an old timey Dixieland van in a gazebo in a park. Um, uh, but I, I, honestly, yeah, if I'm going to, it will be obscure because I think the most affecting concert I saw is a band that I have no idea if anyone knows, but they're a, an early 2000s hardcore band called XBXRX that played in my college town. Um, and it it is one of those concerts that maybe changed my life. Like the amount of like intense energy that was brought into this concert that was just in like the back of a pizza parlor was like the intensity and commitment to that performance was like whatever I do in life, I wanted to have that level of commitment. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> I'm with you. I, I went to a lot of hardcore shows in the back of pizza parlors. But never saw that band. <laughs> great stuff. I, I I don't know that they've ever captured that energy on record, but man, oh man, great. That's great the time. same thing. I ha I went to, there was a band that I saw in my college town uh, called Chucklehead, and they were all clearly on LSD. And it was the best show I've ever seen in my life. There, uh, one of the lead singers like wearing a tutu and and uh, and, uh, and a giant like uh, rainbow afro wig, and it was the best show I've ever seen. And I was just like, that was incredible. And I bought the album, and it wasn't very good. And I was just like, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll never have that feeling again. It was like it was really it was great. Yeah. Ooh, love, love a love a good old ephemeral experience. Anyway, yeah. let's play a role playing game. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I, I don't want to go through my favorites and non favorites. This isn't even my favorite, but I was just thinking about this when I was at uh, Columbia for grad school. They used to have concerts every once in a while. Oh, they would just put in the. Yeah, I'm just sorry to name drop Columbia. Um, it was right after I finished Harvard. No, I. Uh, they they would have concerts. They would just throw in like the middle of the quad, and it would be up and coming artists. And uh, one time I was, I was walking around campus doing god knows what uh, procrastinating and i heard someone playing and i was like oh i'll go check this out and there must have been 20 people watching uh and it was kanye west <laughs> oh, wow. like, it was oh. like me and 20 other people and i was like huh cool and just walked out but uh <laughs> the next time they did that it was uh what is that uh, well, they might be giants and there was way more people and it was a better concert <laughs> 
Anywho, <laughs> let's welcome <laughs> each other to the concert of Dude. That's my segue. Yeah, <laughs> Troy stoking that Kanye, they might be giants beef. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Just add one more to the long list of beefs that. Uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Classic yeah. East Coast, West Coast rift. I can't, wait to hear the, I can't wait to hear the Johns lay down a, a, a accordion infused diss track. Yes. They <laughs> surprisingly showed up on Kanye's uh, hate list on Instagram that he put up recently. Uh, he hates those guys from the oh, NBA right. Giants and Pete Davidson. Um, <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> Dune. Uh, I, I'm interested to see where these uh, next two episodes go because I kind of have set piece ideas in my head, but I'm still learning the flow of this game. And one thing that I'm learning is that uh, I took bad advice from Jared Logan making all these tests too hard. Um, so thanks, Jared. Thanks for nothing. Uh, you would be going in today's session. Jared with, wanting to cause harm to us? <laughs> just a real <laughs> meaning. Just so you know what track. you're in store for yeah. uh, when he takes over. <laughs> but we would be starting today's session with six threat and zero momentum. You lose one momentum per scene. You had zero going into today. So you, you wouldn't be a negative one. We don't do that. But I've decided to, to, to gift you two points of momentum uh, for today's session just for the unbelievable role playing from last week. Uh, oh, so right. we're going to start. It's the, it's the least I can do. Uh, I was going to say, it seems like the economy is just like way off from what my understanding of it was. It's yeah. Generally, I'm realizing it's, it's, it's like a play. U.S. deficit clock, like looking at it it's just, with our threat. It's just insane. Yeah, yeah it, it doesn't make sense. And like you start the game with, if you have four players and a minor, and a house minor, I have four threat, you have zero momentum, let's go. Yeah, but Mr. by not well, opening Mr. Speaker, this game. we have to get this threat dead under control. <laughs> <laughs> I should have opened the game with more zero uh, zero difficulty checks, one difficulty checks, because it allows mm. you to start building momentum. You guys were just giving me threat, and I'm not giving you enough momentum. So I'm going to give you two, and I'm going to keep six, uh, six threat. Uh, but hopefully I'll start using it uh, more as we go on here. Um, but last week was wild, just seeing you, you all uh, try and figure out what the hell's going on here. And I think you're still in a place not quite sure. Uh, but let's go over what you learned, um, just to kind of refresh your memory and refresh the memory of the audience. You learned a bunch of different clues through all your little contacts. Uh, the ones that sort of jumped out are that two Sardaukar soldiers that accompanied the guild navigator uh, to your opera house for the show and whatever other business he had here on Arrakis. The guild navigator left, but the Sardaukar soldiers did not leave Arrakis with him. Uh, Pharos learned that Tleilaxu assassins were instructed to murder several people of various specialized skills who were then reborn as golas and placed in menial positions in noble houses as sleeper agents whose true purpose and potential has yet to be revealed or unlocked because um, they're sleeper agents. Uh, you also learned that Thurman Tyloris, the uncle to uh, the now dead Dresden Tyloris and brother to Duke Tyloris, he might be involved with some smice smuggling and it seems like the plan may have been to use the Houdin, uh, Houdin Opera House as a front for this spice smuggling operation, repurposing uh, all the set design machinery uh, into like spice plug smuggling machinery because that's House Tyloris's primary domain, machinery. Now, whether or not the Duke and Duchess Tyloris knew about this or if this was Thurman's plan to get involved, you don't know. We do know that a Tyloris ornithopter has gone missing, and the two pilots were found uh, dead, murdered apparently, and naked in the streets. You found a map uh, of a hidden sitch, uh, siege deep within the desert, and you learned that Thurman Tyloris is leaving the city in a hurry. Perhaps uh, he's going out to the siege, and this is where the spice, spice smuggling operation is, is heading. You don't know. He might be leaving the planet, but you are heading in that direction to try and figure that out. And lastly, there were rumors of an abomination, a Bene Gesserit sister uh, possessed by her other memory. Uh, having landed here on Arrakis. If or how she's tied up in all of this, or if it's just a big distraction, or if it's even true, you just don't know. 
but you decided at the end of last session to take uh, Aurelius de Grom, your Mentat's personal ornithopter, out into the desert to try and investigate this location that you found that maybe is spice bugly maybe it's the key to all of this you don't know but because there was a complication just dangling out there i decided to use it and once you passed the shield wall you became engulfed at a sandstorm this is bad news uh for the ornithopter bad news for the mission uh so what do you want to do here do you want to try and navigate through the storm what, what, what are you what, talk, talk to me about what you're thinking here I don't know much Aurelius, about are you flying I I mean I guess I am I don't have any particular skills as far as piloting but... what's your move score because that's what you would use for piloting for example it's five it's five so you're just <laughs> Somebody take like these it. controls. I just want I wanted one since I was a boy. <laughs> I'm very good at driving it. A little airsick. Um but yeah, I anything that would minimize the risk. I also don't like what is the do they have fuel? Like how what do they have a range that they're good for or yeah, I would say, and I'm making this up, that you, you have enough fuel uh, to get to <laughs> where you're going, um, but the sandstorm presents an obvious problem. Um, normally, I think you would fly above it, right? Um, but that could put you off course. You could try to land, but then you got to go directly through it. Uh, you may want to hand off the controls to somebody else um, because you would probably be using your move and duty score. Uh, maybe your duty is going to lift it up, but a five and move, it's... This is oh. this is jangly for you. Is there anyone who's really good at this? I, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> it's not what you want to hear your pilot say. <laughs> um, I spent several to go hours the in the Canyon. simulator. I'm, <laughs> I'm quite quite adept at uh, the simulator. Yes, um, eyes I guess are cutting around the cabin. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> uh, um, if you consider us to be in the heat of battle. I may have some tactics that could help. Oh, well, we are certainly fighting this sandstorm. But I'm still only at a five. I just have a focus that I think applies. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I think you see the body language of Pharaohs totally demurring from this uh, little operation. <laughs> like, not really my uh, particular forte, uh, Master de Grom. You know what? I'll give it a shot. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll do my best. We'll say that. Yeah, just looking at your sheets, like Delessa has a four in move. Uh, Corin has a six, which is better. I do have a six. Uh, Pharos has a five. So you're all kind of, this was almost a dump stat uh, for some of you guys. So you, you've got a slightly better uh, chance with Corin, but at the same time, you know, she. Uh, if you if Corin uses duty, you may have a higher duty. So, if you went with, uh, well, tell me what drive you would use here, Skin. Uh, I yeah, I guess I would use duty. Duty. And you have and, an eight in duty. Yeah, and I do have a focus in of grace <laughs> and move. So it's just like I could gracefully pilot it. I can pilot it as gracefully as my duty allows. Yeah, I think that's fair. If, if you're game with it, I'm game with it. Um, hey, I'm totally game with it. Okay. Uh, I was waiting for you to talk yourself out of it, but now I don't want to hurt your feelings. Uh, <laughs> so Aurelius, I recommend flying above the storm. It is the only way to get past it. Oh, thank God you said that. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's going to try to get above above the storm. All right. So uh, yeah, I think Judy is right. I, I, I don't think your statement necessarily matches i am well you know i am house houdin house well, houdin is me you're the head protecting of the house me. is in the ornithopter with me maybe it would yeah no i agree because there is no house houdin if this doesn't work out uh so I have something i could try yeah if, if this makes sense yeah talk to me because i want everybody to be involved even though uh mm -hmm. aurelius will be the one making the role and i think ferris's eyes have totally cut over to core and like surely you know, this is your homeland <laughs> you must know something of the ways of the desert even from the air <laughs> in moments of uncertainty um, 
I am very much driven by my faith, and so I, ha I do have a drive in faith that says my my faith gives me certainty where, and it cuts off where <laughs> where others <laughs> might doubt. Um, and there is a strong need to survive. You know, we're in survival mode, so that is that would be the um, skill focus that I would use. While, you know, it's it's lower than my move skill, I think it makes more sense. All right, so, well, here, here's what I'm going to say, just to kind of set the, set the tone here. I'm looking at what the general difficulty of this is, and uh, I think this is a daunting difficulty. Uh, you could argue that it's dire, but I've already made difficulty too high, but daunting is difficulty three. I'm then going to spend two threat to make it difficulty four. Ooh. And the reason I'm doing this, because I want everyone to get involved in aiding Aurelius's check, and I can't remember exactly how it works, but I think, for example, Corin, if you want to do that, you roll two d20 and your successes can add to uh, skids roll but you also run okay. the risk of rolling nat 20s and adding complications so i think that's that's the giving take i might be doing this wrong but this sounds right to me uh, so if everybody wants to do something like that you can add uh, to uh, skids roll and then skid you can decide if you want to start uh, spending momentum or giving threat to add dice Okay. Let's take some risks, baby. Yeah. All right, so, yeah. Corin, that's what you're going to do. Faris, is there anything you think you can do here that can aid the situation? Hmm. Uh. <laughs> I, uh, this is not, again, this is not my forte. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just face dance into Aurelius and put your hand on his shoulder. <laughs> that's you got this. <laughs> <laughs> face dance into, oh, yeah. so, so, right. um, I believe in you. I believe in you. Uh, yeah, uh, some self, some self love at that moment. Um, no, that was neither the time nor the place. No, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I first is a skulker, a skulker, and a lurker. He's not a, he's not a, he's not a mover and a shaker. So, so you just kind of give him the old Leslie Nielsen. I just want you to know. We're all counting on you. Yeah, and then exactly. you go back to the back of the ornithopter. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the Duchess? The Duchess, of course, has the power of the voice. And this doesn't necessarily have to be a thing that is used on people against their will. Mm -hmm. The Duchess would like to use the voice on Aurelius to bolster his courage, to uh, allow him to let go of his doubts for himself. Okay, I like it. And, and I will uh, use the voice to say, we are all counting on you. <laughs> And talk to me about the mechanical aspects of the voice. What is it you spend no pressure. something to get something? So, when I use it, I can add one, two, or three points to threat to score the same number of automatic successes on any communicate test made to okay. influence my chosen target. Okay. Well, that's just, uh, maybe we make up our own flavor here, but mm -hmm. that's just the way that I aid him to give him strength and confidence. Okay, here's what I think, uh, we, how we can resolve it then. You do a communicate test and decide how much threat you want to give for the automatic successes that go towards his four. You could give two threat and he would already have two successes. And then if Corin hits it, then he would only have to get one success. This would actually be a good chance for you to build momentum if Skid rolls well. Okay. Uh, so you're going to allow my automatic successes to transfer to him? Yes. Okay. Uh, and it's a total of four, huh? Yeah, difficulty I say, four. I'll give two, right? That's two. worth it. Yeah. That's what he spent to make the test harder. Yeah. So now I'm back up to six threat. You're still sitting on two momentum. You've got two successes already. Corin, uh, let's uh, give a roll here and see if you can help, or will there be a complication? Okay, mm -hmm. so rolling two d20. I rolled an eight and a nine. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. nice. Okay, and remind me again what drive you were using. So, uh, uh, for and what drive, for I part? was okay. Faith? Uh, for drive, I was using faith. Faith. That's right. My faith gives me certainty where others might doubt. Okay, and, and what focus? Seven. 
And I used survival as a focus. Uh, I'm sorry, discipline. Discipline, survival. Which was okay. survival. All right, so you rolled a seven and an eight, neither of which were under five, so you don't get that critical success. However, you do get uh, two successes. Great. Oh, it's an eight and a nine. Eight and a nine, but yeah. your target was a 12, uh, mm-hmm. so you're good. So, Skid, Sweet. you're playing with house money right now. You've got four successes. Um, go ahead and do move duty. Okay. So uh, I can earn momentum here. You can earn momentum here, yeah. Or but, create a complication. Or create a complication, yeah. Uh, but because we're going to allow grace, also keep in mind that not only a natural one, but anything, uh, any rolls under five will be two successes. You have a chance here to really start banking some momentum. Okay. So. No. Two failures. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. because this, he feels this belief that his friends have in his in his non-existent skills and is still able to pilot the ornithopter safely above the storm okay uh let's have some fun here so you're able to uh through the the inspiration of the voice and corin uh going back into her uh, fremen survival mode uh navigate above the storm i'm gonna go ahead and spend two threat to add the trait uh what trait do I want to add? I want to add the trait leaking fuel. <laughs> oh, oh no. So I just want to complicate the shit out of this. Oh, okay. So basically you're able to successfully navigate above, but the barrage of sand has given significant damage to the thopter. And now there's like a hole right near the, the, the fuselage, the gas tank or whatever. You're leaking fuel and you're going to have to take her down. Um, now, the good thing is you're not, I don't think you're necessarily in danger of crashing, um, but I'm still going to have you roll. However, you will be off course from your initial target. You're going to have to uh, go right down for the open sand here. So, how do you want to do this? It's going to be a simple uh, uh one difficulty check here to bring her down easy now that you've navigated above the sandstorm okay so yeah you can look looks back and this is like i think we're doing it we're doing it he looks back and sees the oil like i don't know what the fuel would be but it's leaking <laughs> spice it's just spice, it's just spice. Everything spice. <laughs> it runs on spice this fuel <laughs> uh so it's getting a little me 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 yeah, me yeah, me yeah oh I don't want to alarm anyone, but uh, there's a very good chance we're all going to die. Yeah. Just, Ferris is just like trying to tuck himself into the, the most protected position possible in the seat. Ferros, could you do me a favor? Uh, if, if it's within the limits of reason, Master Degram, of course. Could you make yourself look like my mother? You always comforted me in dark times. Excuse me? <laughs> That she looks really sort of like a net bedding. Just picture a net bedding. Make yourself look <laughs> close to her, with, with a, a little well. bit wider face. What what era are we talking? Ah, <laughs> uh, like uh, you know, when you when she had the uh, cameo on Sopranos, like that that era. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. So I suppose we'll see this. Didn't. You just hear it, corn. You we don't have time. It's <laughs> <laughs> not time. <laughs> And just to confirm, how really did you right? know he had that ability? Yeah, just to confirm, Aurelius does not know I could do that, right? We're, we're, we're all, this is no time to be oddly specific. <laughs> we're doing bits, y'all. We're doing bits, y'all. We're just doing bits. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Ferris remains freaked. And, um, okay. But that actually, during, during that riffing, just, you crash. Her ability to, to calm herself and sits uh, focusing her pranabendu internally on remaining composed and allowing her body to be agile should it go flying out of the window of an ornithopter. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, what are you thinking, Ferris? I, uh, I, I, okay, so um, I have a talent called uh, Constantly Watching, um, which is when I make a skill test to detect danger or hidden in- enemies, I can reduce the difficulty. So it seems to me that that bringing a thopter down is a pretty dangerous thing. Maybe I could put eyes through the storm or towards our destination and try to aid uh, um, uh, Aurelius in in our landing by trying to avoid rocky obstacles 
and whatever random shy haludes might be popping out of the sand. <laughs> actually, yeah, that, that that could make sense because in a sandstorm, you would actually be able to see air currents, like what the air currents are dur- doing. So you would be able to advise me and like how best to navigate those too, like as we're in the air. Yes. So, so. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's say that's a, um, uh, let's say that's a, that sounds like a, Communicate, perhaps, if I'm trying to, like, backseat drive someone who's piloting. Yeah, communicate. Uh, I don't know if you're necessarily trying to charm him or not, but... I, I don't think the focus applies, but... Um, yeah. Uh, and what? the drive, I think, is just uh, duty. Duty, this is your job. Uh, yeah. All right, so you have a six in communicate. We're not going to say the focus applies. There's no drive statement, so you can't spend determination. So your target number is 12. Uh, it's... Uh, if you succeed on this... You can lower the difficulty uh, by two to a minimum of zero. Um, so yeah, but that's that's like pre-roll, right? So would that be you set the difficulty, and because I'm using this talent, it yeah. lowers the difficulty target? Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna say difficulty zero. I really want to lean into Great. this part uh, of the system. You're just talking to him. Cool. So I, I got one success. Okay. Great, and that is enough. Uh, so actually, you bank momentum. You get a right, point of momentum it's a zero, for that. Uh, yeah, difficulty. Great. And you lower the difficulty of the landing to zero as well. So mm-hmm. now, Skid, you have a second opportunity here to bank some momentum. Okay. So your words comfort me. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I rolled a sixteen and a natural twenty. I- no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire in Pathfinder or any other game system today. To the side, today. to the larboard side, port side, to the left, to the left. The yes. on you guys. I don't know the nautical terms. Okay, so that that's bad. There's a there's a compliment uh, complication here. Um, I believe you're at uh, momentum three, and the threat is uh, four right now. But you're sitting on this complication. So I'm going to say uh, you're able to succeed. The difficulty was zero because Pharos lowered it. But someone gets injured um, from the rough landing. Oh. I'll roll a d4 to see who. One, Nora. Two, Ross. Three, the Duchess herself. Four, Aurelius. Pharos gets injured. Um, we'll say the rough landing, everyone just kind of and you get a uh, like a fractured leg. So you've got oh. a limp. So you're, we're going to add the trait uh, fractured leg okay. to Pharaoh's. Ouch. And remember, you can remove that trait through certain checks uh, if need be. Uh, maybe you can uh, make a splint out of it. Uh, but being out here in the desert, uh, this is going to make things a little bit trickier. Uh, the good news is you've you've avoided the storm. You've taken her down, but now you're out in the open desert. Let's say from where you're standing, you can see in the distance some rock cro- uh, some rock outcroppings, and they they build up in such a manner that it's possible that there is a cave there, and if not a cave, uh, something that you could hide in. Um, because being out in the open sand is very dangerous. Um, let's go to the map. Oh. On roll 20. So, I've put you, uh, the four of you, out here in the desert, pretty far away. And you see this, oh, all you got to do is move all the way to the cave. Here's the thing, that disturbance of bringing down the Thopter uh, hard has shaken the earth in such a way Uh that all of you can see in the distance, worm sign. (laughs) And I will uh, add two threat to create that. Um, So I will, I'll spend two threat to create the worm sign. I'm not just going to put it there. I'm going to use the currency of the game. So the good news is uh, it's only, it's down to two threat for the first time since we've started playing. You guys have more momentum uh, than threat. Three momentum to two threat. But I'm going to go and... Classic uh, good news, bad news situation. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) Okay. Let's put this token here. Uh, This is what you will eventually see in the distance. (laughs) Uh, but oh God. <laughs> we're going to uh, 
create a conflict here where you have to run to safety before the worm just devours you. <laughs> and the point of this is obviously to just get used to using the mechanics a little bit, create a, a situation here where we have to play through moving through zones. My desire isn't to kill you, but uh, but I might. <laughs> I might if, uh, you know, now that uh, Pharos has this fractured leg, that's going to slow you down. That's going to say the mechanical equivalent is going to increase the difficulty of your checks by one. Now, one thing that we struggled with a little bit when we first started doing this, when you were escaping the opera house, is the idea of like, let me move Aurelius. If Aurelius wants to move, that's his action. Now, if you want to move subtly or boldly, then you roll a, a two difficulty uh, test. And depending on whether or not you succeed, you can do more things. Uh, if you move subtly, uh, you can then uh, gain the initiative without having to, or, or retake the initiative without having to spend uh, momentum or give threat, um, which would allow the person who uh, succeeded on that test to then do another action at a plus one difficulty or let one of their friends go. Or if you move boldly, you could move and uh, move and then tell the sandworm to like uh, go in a different direction. You can move uh, an enemy asset. So let's really, uh, let's really go through this and see what happens. I'm gonna let you all go first. I don't have the, the threat to spend right now to seize the initiative. So uh, who wants to go? Where do you wanna go? And keep in mind, whether you seize the initiative or not, my worm is only gonna get one action per round. Um, so if Aurelius were to go and then you seize the initiative and Pharos goes, then my worm's gonna go, but then Delessa and Corrin can go. And then we go into a new round. So. Tell me what you want to do here, and keep in mind, Pharos is, you're going to have to deal with Pharos' situation as well, but do you want to spend a, an action doing that? I've talked too much. Come on. I believe now it is time to run. We can't move rhythmically. It will it sense already our, sees uh, us. I think it's yeah, a little late to avoid <laughs> detection. Yeah. Oh, it already sees us? Sorry, my, my uh, roll 20 just uh, snapped into existence. So uh, <laughs> does it, Troy, already see us? Uh, it's it's moving in that direction. It's moving uh, in the direction of the sound that was created from the uh, the crash or the, the, the bad landing. Um, but I like mm -hmm. that all of you were like, shut up, Fremen! What do you know about the sand? <laughs> what do you reaction? know about sandworms? <laughs> okay. Um, follow your lead. Yeah, no, there, there's it's no there's no reason to think, Corin, that like your suggestion isn't isn't helpful. It could still be helpful even though it's moving in your direction. It's possible that it just detects our ship. Is this right? I do one big step and then one slidey step and then three tiny steps. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right then. Um, perhaps your fractured leg could help you to not walk rhythmically, Theros. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I suppose, Your Grace, it's important to focus on the positive. Yes, Please. you have an immense advantage over the rest of us, which obviates my need to apologize to you, I feel. We'll deal with that later. No need well, to no, apologize to a, to a mere menial such as myself, Master oh. Grom. Please. That's another good point. Go. Go! And uh, I'll, I'll tell you to not wait for me. <laughs> Who would like to move first? I would. And how? Oop. Okay. I'll fight you. I'll go first. <laughs> go <laughs> really is the coward is going first. <laughs> so it just takes off. Uh, now keep in mind, moving is just one thing you could do. You can create assets. You can create traits. Can but we... <laughs> Mm -hmm. I pull a sled out. Um, <laughs> can we use uh, one another as assets? Um, in terms of uh, if you were to move uh, boldly, I think then you can either move an enemy asset or one of your... Move boldly. No. Uh, you provoke a hasty response from your opponent. If you pass, then you move your asset, and then you may move one of the opposing character's assets. You would want to move subtly uh, to keep the initiative so that somebody else can then act again. Um, oh, you, this is what you could do, is when you move, you can also try to gain an additional benefit. 
but you have to spend two momentum or give two threat to then move again. So that's what it is. So like you could move Delessa one square, spend two momentum, and then Corrin could move uh, a square or a circle. Uh, Aurelius was cowardly running, so go for it. <laughs> I'm taking off. <laughs> All right, which way are you going? Uh, I, I'm i going to go to the right here. I'm going to move uh, to the circle on the right, whatever that okay. represents. So Great. east. So, yes, yeah, so you go east. east. And if you're yeah. listening instead of watching, this is like a, a five by three uh grid, whatever you want to call it, of these uh, zones. So you are at the, you started at the bottom left, and you moved one to there. And you just want to do a simple move here and not move subtly or boldly? I, I don't, I just, I don't understand how this, I mean, isn't the, whoever goes last, isn't the worm just going to catch him? I don't understand. Um, not necessarily, because you don't know the, when the worm is going to enter this space, the, the okay. space that you're all on. Um, okay. But yeah, it's tricky. You want to move with all haste, but you... I don't know uh, if you guys want to split up or and go in different directions and try and draw the worm away. You're also not really skilled at moves, so you might want to let Corrin uh, use her Fremen wiles to kind of direct things. But you just cowardly ran off before uh, Corrin could do anything. Yeah. Uh, I... I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess it would behoove us to at least get the Duchess out of there early. So if if it's up to me, I would say spend the momentum to get her on the move. Okay. Um, yeah, with the worm coming, uh, you could spend two momentum or give two threat so that you seize the initiative and go again. Now, if you did that... Uh, you got to decide who's going to take it. You could let Delessa take it, and then Delessa can decide to just move like you did, Aurelius, or move subtly, or move boldly, or use her turn to create an asset, but then stay in that space. It's up to you guys. If you want to spend it, then who's going to take the initiative? I'm interested in moving subtly. Okay. And in a different direction than I saw Aurelius go. Okay. Um... Great, and if you succeed, uh, you'll be able to move yourself and then reduce the cost to keep the initiative to zero. Um, I steal a hasty kiss from Corin, as I know. The Shahalud is not kind. This may be our not- last moment together. Don't say that. Stay alive, my love. After that kiss, Delessa moves to the north. Um, so give me, this is a two difficulty check. Uh, move is gonna be the skill. Tell me what drive you wanna use. Um, and if you succeed, I'm gonna let you then keep the initiative, even though you're only supposed to keep it once. If you succeed, you're gonna be able to hold on to this initiative and maybe get everybody out of here before the worm comes. I think I'm going with justice. I will protect those in my care. Yep, that's perfect. And what, do you have a a focus in move? I don't, so that puts me only at 11. Unless I can use battle tactics instead of move. Uh, I like that. Yeah, I mean, move is... Because I did choose a different direction, which is a very tactical decision. I love it. I love it. So uh, I will protect those in my care. So your target is 12. Any successes under five, uh, including a natural one, are criticals, but you need two successes. So do you want to just hope you can roll it or do you want to buy or spend? Uh, We already spent two of our three momentum to hold initiative, right? Mm -hmm. I think that I'm not going to touch those. I think I'll just try. Okay. Fortune favors the bold Duchess. Both fail. Oh, no. Both fail. Okay, so the only penalty for that is that you cannot keep the initiative. And... God, I've got so many tabs open here. Failure means you may not spend momentum on additional movement, like Aurelius did. Uh, One enemy may move a single asset one zone, and you cannot keep the initiative. So... Here's what I'm going to say. Could so I just an, jump all of my training and etiquette 
caused me to walk too symmetrically. <laughs> it's very hard to break that habit. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, so here's what I'll say is my free movement is going to put me one zone away from entering your zone. Goo. Oh. Uh, I could have just come on in right now and ate you, but I'm going to say that if you don't, I mean, look at this now. It's going to be Corrin and Pharos here. One of you has to move successfully, do something to keep the initiative, and get Pharos to move, because on the next action, that sandworm's going to come. And truth be told, I can spend threat to have it move two zones, and that would just devour mm-hmm. one of you. What oh do you do? I, th- I say we cheat and just uh, roll real good. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. The old remote roll. Oh, all ones. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. That worked Ooh. out. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Good job. The pandemic increased uh, hobby game sales by a large percentage and also increased cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up cheating. Uh, who wants to go, Pharos or Corin? I mean, here? it seems like this is oh. a Corin. Corn roll. Yeah. Um, seeing the Duchess, like, Duchess just planted one on me and left. We all know what direction I'm going in. Oh, yeah. So, Towards uh, the world. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, in a very much like, wait, uh, after seeing uh, her Duchess um, move stealthily, um, Duchess will, no, I'm sorry, um, Corin will also head in that direction using her seeing in in the situation where this is a stretch but would i be able to use my power drive power drive yeah because i think i think that kiss just like it was the thing i needed to to know that i can do this like we're gonna get out of this situation and it, it reignited my my sense of uh battle Yes, yes. Now, I, I, I don't know if your statement really uh, yeah, power comes really. in. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not, I guess, the more metaphorical use of a knife's edge. We are edge. standing on the knife's yeah. edge right now. There's a worm right there. Yeah, okay. And then what skill do you want to use? Because it doesn't have to be move. Move is the sort of front door one, but you might be like, no, discipline, survival. Uh, I mean, it's my second highest... Uh, move is my second highest um, after battle. If, if, if I'm considering this a battle, getting my uh, the the worm is the clear enemy here, and I am we are in the most dangerous of situations, and I am getting her out of here. This is now war like a war mode. All right, so you're gonna go move and power, and uh, I'm gonna allow power because you're the one that has to sleep with yourself for bastardizing <laughs> okay, the system. Okay, well, well, move is well, my move is stealth. If I if I use battle as a skill, well, I'm not using long blades, so I could I could stick with move and try to yeah. get out of there stealthily. Move okay. or discipline, I'm fine either way. If you want to go move, that's fine. Your target number is going to be 14. Uh, one could argue that stealth is of the utmost importance here. So if you yeah. roll under a six, that's going to be a, a success. Do you want to buy, spend, move subtly, move boldly? I want to move subtly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, if you succeed, yeah. you can keep the initiative at zero cost to allow Pharaohs to move. Keep the yes, initiative. That's what I, that's what I want to <laughs> do. Come on, you guys are ice cold. Right, ice go. cold. I rolled a five and a 12. Boom. All right. So that is Ooh. three successes, I believe, because nice. five is yes. under your move. So three successes. So you bank one into momentum and you succeed at moving stealthily. So, let's put old Corin alongside Delessa, and yep. you can keep the initiative at zero cost. Pharos, what do you do? Ooh. Um, I get the hell out of there. <laughs> um, I, 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 I guess since we're forking our paths in order to throw the worm off, I'll follow um, Aurelius. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you guys were just going to let him go. And this, <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Don't follow me. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> As I thump loudly and symmetrically yeah, after you. No, no, um, please. It hits you. Like a drum beat. running after. <laughs> right. um, so, uh, yeah, of course, move. And um, 
I guess, yeah, I, this is would probably be duty also, I think. Um, especially yeah. if I'm uh, tactically trying to um, throw the worm off our, our, our tracks. Yes. Or at least hold it up a little bit. So here we go. Now, would... keep, keep in mind, you can just move without rolling. If you want to move subtly or boldly, then you roll. Uh, but moving is free, and that's your turn. So you, you kind of have okay. those options. Um, Given that your leg gives you extra difficulty, I'm just gonna move. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have uh, since that's free. I'm not gonna have the difficulty slow you down. Is there an asset creation thing I can also attempt? You can. You uh, too. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Use an asset. Create an asset. That's a momentum spend or threat. Let me see here on this amazing GM screen. Momentum uses. Create a trait. This must relate to the action the character has just attempted, and it must be something that could reasonably result from that action. It costs two points of momentum or uh, two points of threat. You think in Thumper? Um... Oh. Yeah, or, yeah, or, um, <laughs> using, um, I don't want, I don't want this face dancing ability that we've kind of come up with to be a permanent get out of jail free card, but the body control that allows you to change your face seems like the kind of thing that would also allow you to heal a wound. Heal a uh, wound. Interesting. But I don't want that to be, that's, there's got to be a role connected with that. And yeah, if that I sounds like, like that. an asset create like the create asset heal the leg um yeah what you're basically yeah. trying to do is you're trying to remove the trait broken right. leg by using your face dancing ability it's cool rule of cool i'm all about it uh but, but it is going to cause a for, roll yeah but for now while while i can still move freely i'll i'll just leave it at that for now okay so well, I'll keep just, in mind I'll, that on a future turn if you want to start spending some currency you could do that great uh, okay. Now it's about to get real because the worm moves on to the space. Basically, this is what you see. You see the or or ornithopter smoking from landing there and all of a sudden the ground opens up and just... <laughs> it just devours the ornithopter and takes oh, it down. No. Um, and so Aurelius, you have lost that asset. Okay. Uh, and this thing, you've now seen it rise from the sand, and it is very close to both of you. Which direction will it go? It's a new round. Who's going to go? I'm very scared that I've now created this unwinnable <laughs> Kobayashi Maru. What do we do? Uh, keep moving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just keep Run. moving in very different directions because I don't know what Troy's going to do to decide who to chase, yeah. but at least the if less two people us, in one place, the better. If we if can two of us can survive, we can keep the, the show going. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the show, the royal house, whatever. Something has uh, to uh, survive. Yeah. And, yeah. and even if we can create a moment of indecision in this worm as it kind of like selects which of these dainty morsels it's going to chomp down on. That might stall it out for a second, but for, let's just go. Yeah. And Delessa, you did talk about the possibility of creating a, a thumper. That's which an you could use. I'm interested in throwing a thumper into a space that we're not moving into. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Remember, when you move, you can also move an asset. That asset could be you yourself, or uh, if you create the asset of a thumper, you can then move it. Um, we could move and leave that in the spot that we are moving from. Yeah. Because it would be closest to... Right, I think my, my thought is, because we are directly above the worm right now, Corn and Delessa, yes. uh, and so I think that we should move to the right and mm -hmm. hope that if we leave the thumper here, it'll cause the worm to continue towards the thumper and keep going straight. Yes. Agreed. Okay. And then Great. once that, if you do create that uh, asset and once it's out there, then on your turn, any of you could uh, explain how you're moving that thumper. You could move that thumper into other zones and have it then follow along there as well. Um, in the meantime, I just create 
ways that that would manifest either by uh, lowering your difficulty for certain things or making the worm just straight up go in the wrong direction. Uh, I like it. So, if Delessa, do you want to go first and spend the momentum uh, to create that asset? I do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. So I believe it's two. I know you can spend two momentum to build a trait, and an asset is is a is a type of trait. So spend two momentum. You've created the thumper. Love it. Where are you gonna put it? Uh, I will throw it kind of within our same space, um, map wise, but uh, far oh as far away from us <laughs> as I can. Okay, that's great. And and what's nice about that is then you can still move, use your action. You could very easily put the thumper uh, to the north of you, and then the worm would come and kill you and Corrin and move in that direction. <laughs> but Aurelius and Ferris would most certainly get to safety. Um, but we'll throw the thumper in your location, and then where would you like to move, and how would you like to move? I think east, um, but we don't have moment- m- enough momentum for us both to move, is that right? Um, so if you move subtly and succeed on that two difficulty check, you'll be able to keep the initiative uh, at a zero cost, which would allow Corin or your other allies to move. I think that I turn to Corin and I say, you lead the way, you're better with the sand. Because I do not trust myself on this roll. <laughs> <laughs> and I will follow in your footsteps exactly. Okay. Okay, so you're just going to do a straight up regular move. Uh, well, I think you said if we, if one of us succeeds on moving subtly, the other could move for free. Oh, right. I'm sorry. So you're going to let Corin take the lead and yes. hope that she succeeds. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, Corin. So same thing. You want to do move and power? <laughs> yes. Remember what I said about uh, cheating being fine. I don't know. <laughs> Do, do what you want to do. It's a pandemic, right. everybody. Yeah, do us a thing. Cheat. Cheat. All right. Cheat. I'm just Cheat. kidding. Who just oh threw up the happy faces in the Skype chat? <laughs> Who was it? I rolled a six and a 15. Okay, I think the 15 is a fail, but the six... Let me bring up your Johnski. What is your move? Is it six? Move is six. Yeah, so that's two successes. Uh, So that's exactly what you needed. You don't bank any momentum. So while the 15 was a fail, you got the two successes you need so you can move and keep the initiative without spending momentum. There we go. Then I had the focus of stealthy too, right? Yes. Yes, that's what gave you the the two successes. Uh, So you stealthily sneak away, leaving Delessa behind. But now one of you, either Delessa, Aurelius, or Pharos can go before the worm does. Having set off this thumper, I think I'd like to move away from said thumper. <laughs> yes, I, mm. I, 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 I understand. Seems like airtight logic to me. Uh, no, we must protect the thumper at all costs. <laughs> yes, <laughs> grab it, grab it. Shield it from the worm. And uh, I will move normally <laughs> so that there's no roll. 500 credits. <laughs> Aurelius, it's not the time! I've already lost my ornithopter. I must be able to salvage something. <laughs> uh, where did you find this thumper, by the way? Let's just make up a story. Did you see it buried in the sand? Did you pull it I out think your it pocket? was in. I think it was in the ornithopter. Ah, uh, and you just dragged it along with little, you. Like, yeah, salvage That's it That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think, uh, uh, well, in the air, all we could do was search around us for anything that might be of use later. Mm. And we are and wearing... I, Rudimentary, rudimentary compared to Corin's, but we have kind of like off, off, off brand, brand, off brand still, still suits, suits on. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. you do. Yeah, you have uh, Costco brand still yeah. suits. Still no <laughs> brand, yeah. still suits. Kirkland Kirkland signature still brand still suits. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Kirkland still suits. Oh my god, uh, I'm sorry. Love yeah, that's it. one of my favorite brands. Never had a Kirkland. <laughs> I didn't like. Hey, so. no shade. <laughs> nope. Yeah. But you do hear Corin shout, uh, they're going to be salvaging our body parts. Move. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. It's all right. <laughs> so after the discussion of the worth of the thumper, which direction do you move, Delessa? And how do you move? Or do you just do a straight up move? Straight up move east following the pattern I saw Corin make. Just a little less stealthily. Mm-hmm. Okay. I always imagined the uh, the Fremen way of walking was similar to the way uh, Danny Torrance walked at the end of the Shining movie. 
Like you kind of follow yeah. the, the snow prints backwards and then create. You guys know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like uh, how Morris oh, yeah. Day walks on stage. Or uh, <laughs> Monty Python's funny walk sketch. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah that's actually the a Ministry perfect. of Silly Walks. Yeah. Yes. Classic. I that's think that's I why it. I became a, a <laughs> interest in comedy. That sketch. Oh wow. Yes. Yeah, awesome. that is that is memorable. Uh, <laughs> that was how I walked down the hallway in middle school. <laughs> I just love that it. was my friendship lit- litmus test in in middle school and high school. If they didn't find Monty Python funny, we couldn't be friends. Mm-hmm. Great, great litmus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's probably a good good period of eight or eight or nine months in ninth grade where that was my primary form of communication was Monty Python quotes. <laughs> real, real, real popular stuff. <laughs> How to win friends and influence you, people. Not the most friends, but the right friends. Right. Yes. No wedgies were given. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, then I would say here, you know, again, I'm not 100% sure. I think the way it's intended is like, all right, you already seized the initiative. You no longer get to do that. But the way I said it last time is like, if you move subtly and succeed, you could do that. Now, you didn't do that. Now, you could still spend momentum to take it again, even though I don't think you're supposed to more than two times in a row. But I'm just going to say the worm moves in the direction of the thumper. Um, Hold on to your momentum. There's no reason not to. It's moving in that direction. However, will it continue moving north? Or will it start to follow the Duchess and her Fremen lover? (gasps) This is not a time to roll a complication. What do Pharos or Aurelius do, and how do they do it? Find out right after this quick word from our sponsor. Ah. What do you do? Clarification, uh, I hate to take away momentum from us, but I think I spent it all on the thumper. <laughs> you, yeah. spent, you spent it all. Well, that was a I quality told you it was zero. Precious. It was a quality zero thumper that you used two momentum for, um, and you had three left at the time. So now you have one momentum, and I believe I have two or one threat. I only have one threat because I haven't. uh, Can you guys give me some more threat? I'm really low on threat right now. Uh, I spent a lot at the top of the show. I had this great. I think my wife got me for Christmas a couple years ago. It's like a dry erase thing that goes right in front of my computer, and I lost the dry erase pen. And it would be very helpful right now for tracking momentum and threat. Mm. This has been Troy's Problems <laughs> <laughs> with Troy the Valley. Uh, what do you want to do, Pharos or Aurelius? Who wants to go and how? Can I just say I'm really enjoying this? Uh, Are- hey, if Aurelius is, has the opportunity to run uh, screaming in fear, he's going to take it. Yes. Every time. Okay. Um, so instead of moving subtly or boldly, you move fearfully uh, further east. Yeah. Okay. Straight says, up. Move. I don't have to outrun the worm. I only have to outrun you. <laughs> he says I don't think worms Ferris. and lions have the same capacity for eating. <laughs> well, he already ate the ornithopter. <laughs> surely, he's almost full. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, now, Far- excuse me, Aurelius, are you just moving without doing any other shenanigans? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we're kind of out of, we're, 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 we're scratching to the bottom of the barrel for other options, so I think he's just going to just run. Okay, I like it. And then do you want to uh, spend, uh, give me two threat, because you don't have the momentum to uh, steal the initiative, or do you just want to... See what happens. You know what, Tron? I'm going to throw a couple threat your way so uh, that my man can uh, follow me uh, hot on my heels. I'll take it. I'll take that. See, threat. that's my boy right there. That's right. <laughs> Spins threat to keep the whole crew afloat. That's um, right. <laughs> great. Let's, uh, so I'm going to take that sweet, sweet threat to uh, claim the initiative. And uh, Pharos will hobble in a conventional, not stealthy nor bold way to the east. <laughs> okay. Staggering, hopefully, with enough uh, asymmetry to his hobbled uh, gait to throw off the worm that is nipping at his heels. Wonderful. And yes, that uh, fractured leg has not come into play yet because you have not rolled uh, the, the check that you need to do. Anything mm-hmm. would be uh, at one plus one difficulty. Now, here's the thing. 
since the worm already went in this round, uh, we start a new round right now. So even though you seized the initiative, it just gave you further space. Now the worm can act. Uh, actually, I could have it act right now if I so desired by spending the threat. But I'm going to wait and allow the players to choose what they'd like to do here. Looks like Delessa and Corin, you're in the most dangerous position, being only one square away. Would you like to? Yeah. One of you like to act? I would like to run. <laughs> <laughs> but I would I would stay behind to make sure that Delessa was safe. Okay. Now keep in mind this would be a great opportunity for you of all people to move boldly. Move boldly in such a way that if you succeed on that check, you can move the worm anywhere you want. Oh. Rather I can? than just assuming, yes, you, if you succeed on moving boldly, you can move an enemy asset one zone. So rather than just <gasps> hoping that it moves, continue north, you off can course. guarantee it. Yeah. yeah. Heck yes, that's what I'm going to do. Heck yes. Just like I planned all along. <laughs> yes. Wheels You're within right. wheels. You are a fountain <laughs> of ideas. Uh, all right, so. All right. Obviously move, obviously uh, you're going to be invoking uh, the survival focus, excuse me, stealth focus. What yes. uh, What drive here? You sticking with power? Sticking with power, baby. Okay, comes at a knife's edge, and this is a knife's edge. This is the knife's edge. All right, so your target is okay. going to be 14. Six or under yields you two successes, and you need two successes in order to succeed. Do you want to spend momentum or threat to add a die. Yeah, uh, but don't we need that to help everybody else get across? Well, this is that thing, right? Like if you spend it to buy a die, it might mean extra success. You gain momentum down the yeah. line. That could be something, a six or under that turns into two successes. So I don't know. I think the Let's way the it. game is intended is like spend, spend it. it. Yeah. You're really supposed to Let's keep do it, it. Let's like do moving. It. Yeah. All right. So we're yeah. down, down to zero momentum and three threat. I rolled an eight, a six, and a four. Whoa! Yeah. Wow. So that is five successes, right? Because oh. the six and the four count as double. That's four successes, and the eight is under your target. That's five successes. Wow. So you bank three momentum on that. Wow. Ooh, with the grace of the right. desert wind, she, she dashes across the surface of the My wow. windswept the hair. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm. where would you like to move? I don't want to assume. Do you want the worm to backtrack where it came or do you want to have it continue to the north? Let's have it continue to the north. That way I know my boys are safe. Okay. And then where would you like to move? Because you, uh, you can move now as well. Do you want to continue going east or go east. to the north one square? <laughs> No, I ain't moving in that spot. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. All right, so this is really cool. I, I, you create these things, you just hope that they play out in a, in a way that's, uh, you know, uh, oh, what's going to happen? And it's actually feeling like that now. So you're Great sitting game on... Design, Troy. So thank you. Yeah, no, it's the good folks at Modifius. Well, this is the thing: is like we really weren't playing Modifius, uh, Modifius threat and momentum correctly. There needs to be more interplay of it. You spent that moment momentum and then gained three. Uh, huge. So thank you, Modifius. Yeah. Let's talk about what you want to do here. Three momentum, three threat. If you don't take the initiative by spending two momentum or giving two threat here, it's going to be the worm's turn. Uh, but you also have some space. Unless I spend threat to have the worm move twice. What do you want to do? And I might do it. And eat the Duchess. I, yeah, I think we have to. Well, we got to get the Duchess as die. far away from the worm as we can, I think. So. Got to get the Duchess away from that bad, bad worm. Yeah. It's a bad worm. I want to run from the bad, bad worm. Uh, let's spin the momentum. Okay. Uh, spending two momentum to keep the initiative so that Delessa can go. You're down to one momentum, three threat. I think it's a smart move. What do you do, Duchess? I would like to follow once again in the footsteps of that graceful goddess of the sand, Corin. <laughs> and uh, I want to do it where I get to roll so that maybe I can spend momentum and gain momentum. Mm -hmm. It looks fun. It does it look is fun. fun. Uh, okay, so is this a move subtly or move boldly? Throw the worm even further, of course. 
Could I throw it? <laughs> Where would I throw it? It's well, as far I'll tell away. You. Could I throw it off the map? Yeah, you could throw it up here or uh, over here. Excellent. So like uh, zones that don't exist, but like where it started. So it's even further away from you. And Again, that would make sense. It just keeps moving in that direction. The, exactly as I saw her do it. I have been trained to follow movement. Once I see it, I want to recreate it. So I will move boldly. Okay, move boldly. What You're obviously using the move skill or using battle tactics. Uh, battle tactics. <laughs> okay, a little battle, a little tactic, and then what drive here? I am driven once again. Um, I cannot die because as the first Bene Gesserit house ruler, letting my house fall to dust would be the ultimate disgrace to the Bene Gesserit, not proving my point of what this kind of power can do. So I'd like to roll with my power drive, the Bene Gesserit will control the Imperium. Ooh, all right, so you're going max effort here. That is a five for tactics and an eight for power. Your tactics focus will come in, so anything five or under will be two successes. Your drive statement is aligned. 13 is your target. Do you want to... Uh... I have one determination. Ooh, all right. Ooh. All right. That allows me a reroll, right? Uh, it all allows you a reroll or an automatic uh, Number, critical. An automatic, yeah, automatic. Uh, uh, but just one. one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the beauty um, of that is then you get it, and but you I can only like roll to one die. Spend the last momentum to roll another die. Okay. All right. So three d twenty, and you've got that determination. You can always use it to reroll. Uh, You need two successes, 13 or under. Anything five or under is two successes. Five, 11, and 13. So one, two, three, four. Four successes. So you bank two momentum, totally worth spending. Uh, So you're back up from zero to two momentum and you succeed. And do you want to move it off course further north? Oh yeah. Nice. (laughs) Off the map. And then you follow Corin uh, to the middle of our grid here. And just to the south, if you look beyond the dunes, you see Aurelius uh, with Pharos limping behind him, uh, rushing along the sands. You're in really great shape here. So I'm gonna mix things up. I'm gonna spend two threat to move the worm two positions. After going off course to the north, it realizes the error of its ways because it's a smart worm and maybe Pharos's leg is just shaking the sand just enough that it smells something and changes course and it moves back down one and then over to the east. Now, the good news is it's at least two zones away from Delessa and Corin um, and three zones away from Aurelius and Pharos, but you're not out of the woods yet. Aurelius and Pharos, you have yet to go this round. Who wants to go? What are you doing? How? Why? Boys to men. <laughs> ABC, DVD. <laughs> I whisper on the winds above the sand. There's rocks ahead. Yeah, we gotta we get to the rocks. Two zones away from the rocks yes. that are nearby the cave. And yeah, what I say with the rocks, the rocks will lower difficulty by one when you get there, because you have there's a little hiding you can do amongst the rocks. Yes, I want a rock. Let's <laughs> let's go. I want a rock. Let's, let's let us go to them. Um, I want a rock with you. All night. All night. Um, Skin, did he play that? Well, when we you should say put all night because we're in the sand and the no. desert, and you know. Very uh, dangerous sunlight. Um, are you guys moving? Just a straight up move. I mean, you're very safe right now where you are. You could just move. Let yeah, the. Or- our lady in liege is currently a human shield in front of I us. Know. That's I know. I was, I was saying, I think all the momentum, everything we have should be spent on Corin and her, 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 is it majesty or highness? Yes. I, yes. Her majesty, <laughs> her majestical highness. Mm-hmm. All, everything, all of our resources should be spent on them because yeah. Pharos and I are relatively safe, like where we are. We can just move normally. I think that's, I think the, that's the play. Okay. I think that's yeah. the play. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'll speak for myself, and uh, a Pharos will just continue to to painfully hobble through the shifting sands, uh, and I'll just go one space east to 
try to uh, get on over to the closer to the rocks. Yeah. Okay. Great. And uh, where the worm already went this turn, Aurelius, you don't have to pay uh, to seize the initiative. You could just go. I well, it's just like how how are you gonna get ahead of me, Pharos? And he's gonna run after his hobbled companion Great. Uh, further into the desert. I think we could say I got ahead of you by tripping and then sliding down the surface of a dune. That's good. Um, I like that. I'm like, uh, get it, scrambling to my feet, <laughs> sand pouring out, of, <laughs> pouring out of my... Surfing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gnarly dude, surge! <laughs> yeah. Man, Marks. that would hurt with a broken leg. Oh, yeah. Trip and like fall down mm-hmm. a dune. That would hurt. Real. What is the momentum uh, threat situation here? I I have two momentum, one threat, because you had three, but then you moved the worm twice. I did, I right. did. For two yeah. threats? That's right. right. Which is why I couldn't go again now. All right, so we're starting a new round here. Uh, both groups here uh, are two zones away from the rocks and three zones away from this, what now looks like a cave in the distance. Uh... What do you want to do here? Still haven't rolled that complication. Uh, anything could happen. I don't know. You're in good shape, but I'm interested to see what you do. That's right. So I've got one threat that I want to use. Corin, show us your bold movement again. <laughs> Uh, Move this worm backwards. As I as I shuffle shuffle the sand off of my feet, getting ready to just uh, tap dance away from this <laughs> square, this circle grid. Um, so if I'm if I'm moving first, yes, yeah, then I, I will sense. move boldly because I think let's let's take some chances here and get to safety. Okay, using the same uh, drive and skill. Okay. Um, do you want us to do any spends here, or you just want to throw caution to the wind? Um, if I spend, that means we potentially can move faster. Do it. If you add another die, you have more chances of getting more mom- momentum back. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's do it, because these rolls have been good yeah. for right. me. Mm-hmm. So burn that last point of momentum. You'll have 3d20. And uh, once again, you're using move stealth, which is a six. So six or under is going to be two successes. And you're sticking with power. Power comes at a nice edge. So your target is 14. Roll those 3d20s. I think All we right. still have one moment to match that. I think we had two. Did, did yeah, you have two? Yeah, because we had okay. two. Mm-hmm. So I tried to take two. <laughs> you're too good. Uh-oh. Oh, I keep I hit, track. <laughs> I hit my mic and it like muted itself, <laughs> mad at me. All right, I rolled a 10, a nine, and an 11. Whoa, what? Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right, just three successes. Um, So you get that momentum back and you succeed, which uh, since you move boldly, you can move this worm uh, away from you. And I'm assuming that's what you do. You move it back to the northwesternmost zone. Uh, So yeah, the worm's just confused. It followed the thumper up north and then was felt uh, some disturbances to the south, started coming back around. Thumper's still thumping. Yeah, the thumper's still thumping. And a Fremen is leading uh, the sortie here. do you want to spend momentum to keep the initiative, uh, or do you want to just kind of rock and roll here? You're kind of you're in a safe position. I think you're you might be able to get to safety now without having to do that. You I think we're good. I think we're in a good spot to come for me. <laughs> <laughs> what else can I spend threat on? <laughs> One measly threat. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna move. Uh, I think we're in a good spot. I turn to look at the worm. I want to see my enemy. Maybe it's my friend. See the worm rises up from the sand, just looking wildly for its prey. It's beautiful. (laughs) So I'll take the worm's action. And the worm is just going to uh, continue moving. Oh man, I wish I had more threat can't really do much with one threat. The worm doesn't really move subtly or boldly. The worm just moves. Um, I could spend one threat to create an environmental change. 
Oh. So... Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I want to see what you guys do here, because you're pretty close to getting out. So it'll come back to Delessa, Aurelius, and Pharos. And yet again, Delessa is only two uh, away uh, from this worm, the Duchess. Who would like to take the action? I would like to get away. Okay. Is there any way to move two spaces? Um, yes, if you... I think if you spend two momentum or give two threat, you can then uh, move another zone, I believe. And if that's not the case, I'll allow it. Two momentum. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So you're going to move on to Corrin's space and then run directly past her onto the rocks? The rocks are right there. And as I said before, this is about the honor of the Bene Gesserit. This is about proving our power in the universe. And I think tactically, it's the only way to go. <laughs> I love it. All right, so the Delessa, the, the Duchess is on the rocks, uh, one space away from safety. And the worm is now very far away. Uh, Aurelios and Pharos, it then goes to you. You have no momentum right now. Uh, and one. I have one threat. So be it. Let, let's continue to move inexorably clumsily towards the rocks. Yeah, I'll say Aurelius, now that the worm is some distance away at this point, he does take the time to help Pharos get back to his feet before running deeper towards the rocks. Uh, but he will go first. Yes, okay. uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, and, and Pharos will follow, maybe just kind of locking eyes with him for a moment, like, Ferris is by far the, the lowest in the social hierarchy among this crew, and is like, you, you honor me, but you, you needn't. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of almost like bowing out of the way as uh, as Aurelius sweeps past him on the sand and then and then follows. It's all right. I may need your organs. <laughs> <laughs> Just to spice things up, pun intended, uh, I'll spend my last point of threat to say that as Aurelius and Pharos get nearer to the rocks, you realize that Pharos isn't going to be able to navigate these rocks until his leg is healed. Ooh, wow. Okay. So now wow. zero momentum, zero threat. Let's play dude! I see on your combat cheat sheet you made for us, Troy, aiding an ally if an ally is hurt, you can remove the trait with a skill test against difficulty two. Mm-hmm. Pass and remove the trait. And then Pharos had also come up with the idea that maybe we could uh, he could shape shift and roll to see if the shape shift would be enough to heal it as well. So yeah, those are kind of your two my, options, my next unless move. you come up with something else. But it is a new round. There has been a complication here, or I'm, I'm not using the correct parlance. I've just kind of upped the ante. Uh, and Aurelius, you realize that this is going to have to be, and Ferris, you realize it too, this is going to have to be dealt with, or then, you might have to be left behind. Then unless this, then I might take the first action of this round and try okay. and make an attempt at that shapeshifty heal. Wouldn't I you be it. giving yourself away if you did this? I be you're the, I'm in sight lines of whom I think yeah this is a desperate situation well this is a great um, moment here because yeah. you've already played fast and loose with your face dancing at right. the opera and we never really dug into that when uh, uh, Aurelius and Corin saw Deso Ren and then saw him again dressed in different clothes maybe there were questions that uh, you never really voiced but now Aurelius you, you you are going to see this undoubtedly okay. um but now it's a matter of survival. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I'll go for it. Okay, um, man. Walk okay. me through this moment between Aurelius and Ferris, because Ferris, you realize the situation. You look to Aurelius, and maybe Aurelius, you're starting to climb up the rocks, and you look behind and realize the situation. Ferris, what do you do? There might be a way to, I mean, a last ditch attempt to conceal this, but I'd have to play for time by burning this turn. Um, uh, I will attempt, and this I guess gets into PvP, I might attempt uh, a, a, um, to get Aurelius to move away from me, to like, you must get the Duchess to seek me help, um, to try to 
get him to move away enough to where I can do my uh, my change in private, if that's even possible. If the rock, if I could find a niche in the rocks to conceal me, it's not. It's not impossible. Uh, in terms of zone movement, it wouldn't make sense for Aurelius to move back a zone because he'd be moving further right. away. But I'd say some sort of communicate test to just get him to look away long enough. Um, and the way it works in a contest like this is, Skid, you'll roll to set the difficulty. And uh, oh, that's fun. Yeah, so you're going to set the difficulty, and then Ross will roll, and we'll see what happens if, if Aurelius sees you. Or okay. doesn't see you. So, Skid, let's look at Aurelius's sheet here. Um, right. This is. Go- I'm going to set the skill as understand. Yep. Okay. And then you tell me what drive. Ferris is acting a little weird here. This, you mm-hmm. should be moving with all haste. What drive? I mean, I guess it would probably be truth because mm-hmm. just finding out the truth of who he actually is, or well, truth, just witnessing what's actually happening. Okay. Would, Would this fall what's... under house politics as a focus? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Cultural okay. studies? Cultural studies, possibly. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll make life a little easier on Ross. I won't have either of the focuses uh, happen, but it's going to be a 2d20 roll against uh, 14 for you, Skid, okay. to set the and difficulty for Ross. I'm going to spend three threat to get two more dice. Of course. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. So. <laughs> PvP! PvP! <laughs> All right, I've been rolling terribly. Uh, okay, uh, I rolled an eight, so that's one success, and a, uh, a natural 20. Oh my god. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> so what does this mean? What does the complication mean in this All right, well, <laughs> you ha- there is a complication. Let's just say that while my mind starts trying to work here. But you've set the difficulty uh, for Ross's check to try and conceal this to one. One, okay. So while I think of this complication, Ross, let's uh, walk through what Pharos is actually doing here. I am trying to, I think my skill is communicate, of mm-hmm. course, because I'm I'm attempting to say like, uh, um, please go on ahead. I, I, I'll, I'll find a way, um, seek help. Um, and now, Here's the, the weird thing with the drives, like duty, faith, justice, power, truth. I am lying, but yeah. truth is is like because it's in the in the realm of truth, playing with truth, using using truth. <laughs> if, yeah. a, if a lie can be described that way, well, um, lying falls under truth. It's right. just, the it's abuse having to of do truth. The exactly. Abuse, the manipulation and, of truth. And my right. statement is: belief is a lever, truth is a weapon. There so, you go. as long as as long as he believes that I'm that I'm trustworthy, uh, I, I that is a lever I can play on. Um, yeah. The question is: Are you challenging your drive statement, or are you moving in accord with it? And and yours is so poetic. I think you could argue that you're moving in accord. I with think it. I'm moving in accord with it. Yes. So okay. that means if I roll under my uh, roll under my drive, that, roll, then I'm. That's a. Let's see. So you're using uh, truth and communicate. communicate and communicate. So that is going to be uh, thirteen. I would argue that charm is involved as well. Yep. So anything under six under seven uh, is is a critical. Okay. Here we go. Thirteen. Difficulty is one. Oh, I rolled two fifteens. Oh no! <laughs> so I see this. I see this happen. But but yes, it's and and I think I'm trying to lie to a mentat. Like I'm trying to lie to, to a human computer, who uh, it's if that that someone like this hasn't seen through me already is uh, is wild. So in this desperate situation, the mask is slipping, um, and. Uh, so yeah, do I roll now to, to do the uh, to do the heal? Uh, no. So you use this turn to try and distract him, mm-hmm. and, it and doesn't failed. Um, but I now you'll be able to do that next turn. I cl- uh, He's like, go on without me. Protect the Duchess. Yeah. Go on without me. Protect the Duchess. I'll find a way. But I know something's up. Mm-hmm. Clearly, like, I've, I've probably had my suspicions that something is up with you for a while. 
So I I know that you're 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 planning, you're scheming about something. So I go into the rocks, but as I'm climbing, like I reach a gap that he doesn't see, and I'm able to look back and see him manipulate his body. In this Love way. it. Yeah. Okay. And so even though that will happen next turn, we'll say that the process has begun, uh, and then we'll actually do the roll for it uh, right. next turn to see if it's enough to heal you. Uh, all right. Interesting little turn of events there. Do you guys want to keep the momentum or, or let the worm go? We're still at zero. Yeah. I think we yeah. can let the, let, the, let the worm go. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's had a difficult day. Let the worm go. <laughs> all right. So the worm goes, and the complication is it speeds up and moves to Eep. no space. No. Again, no. No. <laughs> That is a oh dear. That is a horrible complication. <laughs> uh, so now it is just like angry, and it bursts through the sand and jumps up to the zone directly behind Corin. <gasps> now the good Corin, news is the hydras just keep running. <laughs> Delessa, no. Corin, and Aurelius all get to actually take their turn before the next round, but it's right on your heels. Who's gonna go? Um, can I just, uh, I gotta, I gotta call your bluff here, Troy. In oh. the movies, rocks can't, uh, rocks stop worms. Yes. I was, I wasn't gonna say anything, because it's your yeah, game, I was there, but, you know. It's more but, of a, yeah. it's more of a <laughs> trait, it's rockier to lower the difficulty of the checks. Uh, flavor yeah. rocks. Okay. Flavor rocks. Flavor, flavor rocks. Flavor rocks. Yeah. Flavor rocks. Mm. Flavor, yes. <laughs> because okay. much like scissors, rock beats worm. That's right. <laughs> uh, that's fair, and thank you for uh, taking me to task. I'll say Roxy instead. Of, it's Roxy. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Oh, or uh, that does help me. Rockish. Rocks adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of so, each. Rock esque. What are you guys? Who goes now? <laughs> Uh, I would like to move. Kind of rock. There we go. <laughs> yeah, rocky. Hold out my arms to you. Let's see. Kind of rocky or rockish. If I move north, <laughs> Ooh. it'll it'll be like a oh 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 oh. Which which way do I go? Juking out this worm. Yeah. Who do I kill? Maybe he'll pause so, in his hes- hesitation. Or she. I will move north towards rockish. Ooh, okay. Against all of my instinct to be with uh, with the Duchess. Okay, now because, how because are you moving? in my moving away, I think. Oh, I'm going to move boldly. Yeah. Um. Here we go. I think in my, it, it's even though I'm moving away, in in a sense, it is helping the odds of her survival. I wonder if you should spend a threat or give him a threat to get another die, right? Doesn't that? Yeah, heck yes. Yeah, totally. I am going to do that. I'll take because it. Because these are some uh, some dicey times. <laughs> <laughs> these are dicey times here on Arrakis. All right, so am I sitting? Yes. I got one threat now. Got my threat back. Uh, and yes. you guys have zero momentum, I believe, right? For now. Mm-hmm. For now. Three dice. For the moment. Let's see what you got, Nora. Okay. I rolled a six, a six, yes. and an eight. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's five successes because oh, that's uh, huge. six is your stealth score. So you fire. succeed, bank three momentum, and you can Fortune move the worm. Fortune favors the bold. You move over to Rockish, and where does the worm go? Back one? Back one. Okay. Towards Thumper. So no. now it's three uh, spaces away from you guys, and where I only have one uh, threat, there's very little I can do here. Uh, where De- Delessa is on Kinda Rocky and Corin is on Rockish, all of your checks will be at a one lower difficulty here to get into the cave and safety. But Aurelius and Pharos are still in a tricky position. So who wants to go here? Delessa, do you want to get to the cave, uh, or does Far- uh, Aurelius want to take his action? Delessa stands on top of a boulder, which is not that protected from worms. It's a small boulder, but on this point of vantage, I feel a bit of relief. And I look towards our companions uh, and I, I want them to move. Also, this worm, it reminds me of those like little kid roller coasters where the worm goes forward and then it goes back on the same track. That's what he's doing. <laughs> those are fun. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, if you were riding it, that would be exactly your experience. <laughs> this little kid yeah, I was wondering if someone would just be like, I ride it. I create yeah. the asset uh, sandworm hooks. Hooks? Yeah. Come That's on, the Karin. beauty of this game. You can really kind of do anything you want. Yeah. Uh, all right, so, Delessa, you want to kind of give it to uh, Skid here to see if what Aurelius is going to do. I really regret not making hooks now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When this gets published, you can make hooks. Uh... Aurelius, what do you do? Straight okay, up move so, to join your duchess? Yeah, Aurelius is just like horrified. He's got these twin horrors now of the worm now increasingly further in the distance and seeing this his acquaintance here. A Tleilaxu. Does the duchess know? Ta- yeah, Tleilaxu, mm-hmm. yeah. So he is just uh, like he sees this and he just runs a- a- away from Pharos as much as towards the cave to get closer to to Delessa. Okay, so you will move one space towards Delessa. Uh, you are now on Kinda Rocky. You're just standing on the uh, same skipping stone that the Duchess is on. Uh, and now, Delessa, you are the last to go in this round. You can straight up move into the cave, but I, I know you, you're gonna do something crazy. Oh, uh, well now I have to do something crazy because you said that. So I run back towards the worm and pull threat. out some hooks. No. Um, <laughs> right into the game. Um, a cowboy hat suddenly appears. <laughs> Is there anything that we can see about the cave opening ahead of us? Yeah, I mean, it looks like from a distance when you first got here, it, the the rocks rose up to this area and you're like, there's got to be some kind of cave there. Now that you're there, you see a very small slit uh, in the rising of the rocks that leads in. Uh, how deep, you're not sure. It could just be something that you can hide in. It's only the size of a closet, but, uh, you know, your Fremen friend would know more uh, once you oh, reunite. With all this momentum we now have, I wonder if I can create an asset of uh, a, a, a sympathetic siege liver dweller that would come out and help guide us in. Oh, a sympathetic siege dweller. Okay. Uh, so we want to create the, the asset of uh, someone waving you in. Okay. Yes. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, right. That'll be two uh, moments. Perhaps with um, like... knowledge of the Bene Gesserit or <gasps> perhaps... That strange rogue <laughs> Bene Gesserit that I heard of. Okay. Um, then let's put let's put a little toke little tokey uh, somewhere. I'm trying to find a good uh, someone that looks less threatening than some of these. Uh, we'll just boom. We'll just say waving you this way. Uh, and what benefit should that give you? Uh, well, you're able to move on to that space. You've spent the two momentum to create this asset. Uh, I'll say, what, what do you say when you when you reach reach this person? Aid my companions in reaching this siege. It's of the utmost importance. The Fremen uh, nods uh, and uh, we'll say that will lower uh, the difficulty of checks for the next round by one for everyone moving in the direction of the uh, Fremen Siege Dweller. Very cool. Okay, so they're just waving you in and showing you like, go this way, go that way. It's enough to make it easier. And don't forget that the, the, the rockish areas also lower the difficulty. So this is a great chance to bank some momentum if you choose to move subtly or boldly on your way to the cave uh, or just to get there without worrying about the worm at all. Um, so now we'll go to the next round here. And it looks like Corin and Aurelius can with ease get there. If you choose to roll, your difficulty is going to be zero if you want to try and bank some momentum, or you can just move into the cave and not have to worry about possible complications. Up to you both. Pharos a little more difficult. While Pharos isn't necessarily in danger of uh, getting eaten by the worm, you want to try and use your face dancing ability to heal your leg. That's right. Uh, So what do you guys want to do? Who's gonna go? Do you want to let Pharos take the lead here? I'm, I'm, I want to heal, but I'm, I'm, yeah, 
How have we really decided how we do this mechanically? <laughs> no, we're making it up. Um, but that's the the flexibility of the system allows for that. So uh, obviously, we've already uh, given you the face dancing ability, which is yeah. clearly reserved for NPCs because it's wildly broken. Uh, <laughs> Maybe like a I really like, a, a, bit, a particularly difficult check to be able to do. That it. sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and especially since we have all this momentum, right? So. Well, yeah. we just have one because I made a siege dweller. Oh, right, right, right. right. Now here's the thing: you're not Troy on the said rocks. said I would do yet. something cool. So. It was pretty cool. Uh, you're not on the rocks, so you're not going to get the minus one difficulty. However, because of what the Duchess did, you will get minus one difficulty on this check. But what okay. you're trying to do is pretty tough. So yep. I'm going to set that as a difficulty three check. Okay. Which has been now lowered to difficulty two. two. Okay. And we've got one uh, momentum. Spend one it. Momentum. Spend it. One. So I'll, sp- I'll spend it. Okay. Um, you want to give me some threat? And have uh, some fun? Uh, I'll just give him a couple that. threat. Get, a, get another yeah. die. Well, yeah. no, it's not one for one that way for your no, no, second no, no, you no, die. No, two threat for, for an, an initial total of three. Uh, one momentum and two threat for two dice. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think it's like if you want to build, uh, you spend one momentum for the first die and then another two for the second die, but yeah. they're different pools, momentum and threat. So, great. All right. I will. I will. Uh, I know I'm kind of riffing here, but uh, the skill. I'll do it. I'll spend, okay. I'll give you threat and I'll spend the momentum to gain great. three extra die. Okay. Um, the f- skill I'll use is discipline, the focus of body control, and. As far as the drive, because this is self-interested and this is very much to do with the Plilaxu side of me, whereas most of the other things that I've been doing so far have been the the part of me that is working with House Sudan. I, this isn't the most like to in in my the player's best interest, but I'm going to use faith. I don't have a statement there, but because okay. like Plilaxu are sort of described as a theocracy, I think that there is like a like a faithful like that this face dancing is in a way a kind of prayer. I like it. And uh, it's also a tough check for you because it's those, your scores are five and five. So your your, your target is 10. I, I gotta get under 10. It's Anything tough. under five uh, is gonna be two successes and you have four dice, right? The two you have, and then you spent a momentum to grab a third. You gave me threat to buy the fourth. That's right. Four yes. dice. You gotta get gotta under get... 10, five or under is two successes. Actually, Troy, real quick, can I clarify something? In yes. What situations does the drive statement come into play other than when using determination? So pretty much when you try to do an action, you look for a drive statement that applies to what you're doing. And if there isn't one, then you go with a, a drive that doesn't have a drive statement that applies. Now, sometimes you may be like, no, I need to use my drive statement, but it conflicts with the action that you're trying to take. And so if it conflicts and you want to use it anyway, because maybe it's your best skill, then you either have to challenge that drive, which you gain a point of determination, but then cross it out when uh, you're done, uh, or you um, comply with the drive. You still gain the point of determination, uh, but I think it's an automatic complication if you do that. Actually, yeah. Uh Shockingly, okay. I, re- I remember that. It's huh. a little, it's one of those things I think you just, if we kept doing it a few times, it would make more sense. Yeah, yeah. Corin, in the second episode, uh, had that happen. You uh, you did something that was against one of your drives, and you gained a mm-hmm. point of determination, and instead of uh, crossing it out and recovering it, uh, you just created a complication. All right. I've made the rolls while you adjudicated all that. Yes. <laughs> one was well, a 15, so failure. Oh. Failure. One was a six. Success. One success. One was a four underneath my focus drive. Two success. Now up to three. The last was a natural 20. Oh! 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 Okay. (laughs) All right. Uh, So I made, I I achieved the heal, and yet. Achieved the heal, banked a momentum, because the difficulty was lowered by the Siege Dweller. Mm -hmm. Uh... And you are healed, so we'll remove that uh, that broken or fractured leg trait from you. And I know what the complication is, but mm-hmm. I'm going to hold on to it, not unlike okay. what I did with the sandstorm. All right, so the good news is Pharos is healed and can now make it up to the rocks. However, that is Pharos's turn. Yep. 
Unless you want to spend two momentum to then move up with Aurelius. The worm is far enough away, you probably don't have to worry about that. Uh, the worm is going to move. The worm will uh, move to the middle of the board here. Again, Aurelius and Corrin are very, very safe right now. Um, kind of depends on what Aurelius and Corrin want to do here. If you want to just move to safety, or if you want to roll to try and bank momentum at the risk of creating a further complication. Get that momentum. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take that risk just to see if we could help out. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna help do out that. Ferris. All right, so Corin, are we thinking yes. move boldly again? Just keep this worm guessing mm-hmm. where you are. Okay. Yes. Great. Give me that. No, uh, just kind of hop skipping between tortoise shell sized rocks. Yeah, and you see a Fremen sitch dweller waving you on, kind of guiding you. Okay. So I'm going to move boldly. Boldly. A two. <gasps> I, can oh. I, I don't even, a two, a three, and a four. Wow. 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 Six successes? <gasps> yes. Wow. Whoa. And the difficulty right. was zero, oh, right? Because it was lowered by two? Yeah. That's right. I'm going to take a wow. photo of this. Oh, that's right. It was lowered by two yeah. because of uh, the rocks and the Sish Dweller. So you are now at max momentum. Yeah. Oh, and amazing. Max Huge. momentum. Man. You get to the cave and the worm moves back one again. You are now at max six momentum. Aurelius, uh, what do you want to do here? It doesn't even make sense for you to because you can't get any more momentum. Yeah, Unless you want to create a trade or something, I don't know. No, really, like, honestly, I think he's all the only thing on his mind now, especially now that he sees the worm is definitely confused. It's, it's circling back towards the thumper. It doesn't, it's not sure where we are. So he's really just focused on getting to the Duchess and telling her what he just found out about Pharos. So he is just like sweating, like it's all kind of draining into his, his cheap off brand still suit and <laughs> just breathing heavy and he just uh, scrambling up the rocks to get to this cave so that he can get to grab the, the duchess's ear okay and with that massive success it, this is all uh, uh automatic at this point so pharaohs just described to me uh this turn of events here because you've transformed yeah. to try and heal your leg and you're going to make it there now. Right. What do you do? I think you, uh, maybe what what uh, Aurelius saw is like a lift up of a of a robe and or, or like the, the, the still suit maybe clasp around the ankle like shifting as a Frost is looking at like a bulge that looks swollen and livid on his ankle and then you just see like that skin turn gray and like huh. gonna reshape and lengthen as he stands up. And as you r- dash back to the cave, uh, um, Pharos, it just runs up onto the rocks and jogs towards the cave, looking as though nothing happened. Jogs towards the cave and the siege dweller, the Fremen siege dweller, once you are all there says, Come this way and runs up ahead uh, into the cave system. Assuming you follow, uh, you enter the cave and the temperature drops immediately. It's it's dark, but it's so much cooler uh, than running across the hot sands, uh, being chased by a worm who is now in your rear view. The ornithopter is, of course, gone, but you are safe. Uh, you're trying to m- move to keep up with this siege dweller who's moving through the rocks uh, like uh, they could do it blindfolded, uh, but you're looking around and there are stalactites and stalagmites everywhere and you're trying to navigate without smacking through so you kind of lose sight of him. But eventually, uh, if you follow along, you get to an opening and you see uh, the siege dweller is just standing there on the other side. And as you enter into the the clearing in this cave, uh, you notice out of the corner of your eyes a dozen, maybe two dozen Fremen, (laughs) all wearing still suits, 
all with the same blue and blue eyes of Corin start to emerge from the shadows surrounding you. The complication is that the man who steps up to speak with you recognizes you, Corin, oh, but may not know your whole story. Um, so he, he pulls down the tube from his nose and points at you. It's like, I know you. You are the one who deserted her people. The one who left her seat behind to walk amongst those who do not hold the water of life sacred. Why Shai Halud spared you just now, I do not know. But tell me why we shouldn't spill your water and the water of your companions as a sacrifice to those Fremen who you abandoned. And the Fremen start to close in. I didn't abandon my people. I did what was necessary. I did what was in my life path. I did what was my fate and my destiny. And this is what led me back to you. There are things that I will never be able to explain. But if you believe, if you believe in fate and you believe in destiny, then you know that we are supposed to be here at this very moment. That all of us, at any point in our lives, are supposed to be there at that very moment. And you will spare me and my friends. We believe in such things. That you well know. But while you sit in their palaces, treating water as if it were Air. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like what's the most basic thing. <laughs> treating it as if it were treating like water, a, as if it runs like water. You know, water like wine. We stay here in the desert, holding it sacred. How do we know that you have not become one of them since you no longer live among your people? I have always been treated like an outsider. I am not treated any differently where I reside. I have a mission from birth that I am upholding. What and is whether that mission? you see it or I have to protect the Duchess at all costs. You would protect the Duchess more than you would your own Naib. Protecting the Duchess protects us all. You don't see that, but I do. Maybe a younger Fremen in the back steps up and is like, Do not listen to her, Naib Daloub. She is a deserter, and these people she are in, in league with will not stop until we are exterminated from our home. She is one of them now. And he tries to quiet the, uh, the younger Fremen and says, then explain to us why she is so special, more so than your own people. I didn't say more so, but this is the path that I am taking. The Bene Gesserit know this. I like to use the voice. <laughs> okay, a little flavor voice, what are we thinking? I'd like to use the voice on the leader to cause him to um, uh, banhandle his, the the dissenter in the group. Okay, so you want to try and like? Oh, isn't that tough though? Because like every you can you can only use it on one person at a time, right? Is that yeah. how it works? So yeah, I mean, everyone would see you using the voice on this person. It's true. Maybe I don't want that. They might be Unless considered you just want to like show and prove it's like I, I'm a Bene Gesserit, you know, just don't. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, I, I'm debating because it is a powerful secret, and yet, if we can sway this siege to our will by making them followers, that could be very powerful. I'm just saying you might anger them by, you know, if I using fail. the voice on their leader, you know. Yeah. They might be like, it, it could go either way. They could be like, I was like, oh, okay, let's not mess with her and her crew because she's a Bene Gesserit. Or they could say, what the hell are you Get doing? Her. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. since we're metagame Get chatting, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to use the voice. Maybe we should use all our ridiculous momentum to create some sort of sign from Shai Halud, from the Ooh. greater powers. Uh, like okay. An eclipse. <laughs> an eclipse. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, we're, hmm, yeah. Spend Just two like momentum. the old Betty Jesuit Gypsy said. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we are, we are like theatrical, like theatrical illusionists. Is there mm-hmm. not something to, um, maybe this we could interesting. just kind of just act out just a, a scene from a Neil Simon play that's like super <laughs> apt in the situation that they don't yeah, know. That's just like, wow. We can yeah. win them over with the power of, uh, of community uh, theater. Yeah. 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 Can we all go into a soliloquy? Yeah. Is that enough? I knew that set design would, house would mm. come in handy. Yeah. Let us act out a play where we will, yeah. the truth will be vaguely referenced. Which, but yeah, like, th- uh, yeah, there we go. Some 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 theatrical illusions. Uh, I like uh, got to your use nose, for example. Sleight of hand. Perhaps part of my oh, I forget what the Fremen word for like an overcloak is. Is uh, leaning on some sand, and if I were to yank it, then that could cause the illusion of an eclipse as sand falls over the opening of the siege. Okay, it's just crazy enough to work. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I I like what you're going for here. Is basically. It sounds like Corin's response to these uh, suspicious Fremen are, she is important. Mm -hmm. She is special. I have a greater purpose and it's aligned with her. And they're like, well, what's so special about her? Even like using the voice, not in a malevolent way, but in a persuasive way. Like um, even them just hearing it would probably like something. I, I like I, it. You, a flavor voice. What? But Ooh, like, ventriloquist yeah. to the cave itself. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to throw the voice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's get weird. Uh, let's look at your shoot he- sheet here. Uh, that's communicate, uh, which is obviously what you want, anyways. That's your your highest skill. Inspiration focus. Sure. I want to inspire them to follow me. Yeah. Yeah, it's never going to come more in handy than it is right now because if this goes wrong, you're all dead. Corin might be able to take out a couple of them, but they'll finish you. Uh, Could I? And then it's not my highest drive. You want to aid that role? Yes, let me figure out what drive she's thinking here. It's not my highest, but I'm thinking truth for the same reasons. I have similar statement about truth that is kind of counterintuitive, similar to Ross's uh, or Theros's. The purpose of argument is to change the nature of truth. Yeah, I mean, I think it it oddly fits kind of perfectly here because you're using a spectacle to trick them, but the truth is that you're good people. You know what I mean? You're not trying to trick them to harm them. You're trying to trick them to so you can continue along with your mission. Hell, you're just, they might you're trying to, to get help. them to see the truth from your perspective. There we go. And I'm what awesome. Do you, what are you thinking about yeah. to aid Corin? Uh, using my faith. Mm-hmm. Because I am certain in very uncertain times, and they don't believe me, but I am still driven. And um, communicate? Eee, that's not the best one, but let's go with that. Yeah, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't there's, think there's anything this... else I don't think anything else really fits. Yeah, well, and it's hard too. because you always want to use your best skills, but sometimes you can't, and that's okay. Well, if you use communicate, yeah. I can use my. I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna use my preemptively use my advisor skill uh, with the, the, the communicate focus. Mm. So I uh, so it will allow you to re-roll one of your dice. Okay, and you want to use that on Corin or on the Duchess? Uh, either one, uh, the okay. Duchess. 
Okay. And he's gonna yeah, say, I think that would be more. Uh, at this how it this this is how it kind of plays out. He's gonna say, it says, uh, we beg your forgiveness, but we believe that the Duchess and House Houdin represents the only barrier between the excesses and brutality of the Harkonnens against your people. So that's that's the advisor. So you get to re-roll it. All right, so the Duchess gets to re-roll. Corin, let's see if you can add to uh, the Duchess's successes, and then I'll, I'll set the difficulty for the Duchess. I'm going to set your difficulty at uh, one to try and aid here. You need one okay. success. Uh, communicate is a five. Faith is a seven. So you get a roll mm-hmm. under 12, 2d20. Okay. I rolled a 15 and a 17. Ooh, okay. That's it. Uh, okay. So, Duchess, you're allowed to re-roll here with your uh, Mentot's advisor power. But this is a big move here. I'm going to set the difficulty at three. All right, I have one re-roll. I do have determination. I'm going to use the Bene Gesserit voice to throw my voice and make it echo around the chamber um, because of our knowledge of acoustics, the way we set up the Houdon Theater. Mm -hmm. I have the ability of finding the sweet spot in the cave wall to make it echo perfectly. And um, I can also go one for one up to three spending threat to get automatic successes. I'm gonna have to add some dice too, because I only have two. Yeah, so you need let's... three successes. You're starting with two dice. You're rolling uh, communicate and truth. So your target is 14, but eight or under net yields you two successes. So how many momentum and threat are we at here? I'm can I confused. spend three momentum to get two extra dice? Whoa, yes, you can. And now I have four dice. Um, and of those four, I'm going to give you two threat to make two of them automatic uh, successes. Okay. Oh, with the voice, right. Okay. So you're sitting on two successes and you've got four dice. So you're trying to really bank some momentum here. You only need one more success. Okay. But will there be a complication? Wondering if I should, if that means I take two of them back out. Or if I should roll them all, can I roll them all to see sure. which ones become automatic successes? <laughs> oh, you want to change them after, I right? I wanted oh, you used... to roll low and replenish some of that momentum. I think, I think you can only do that with determination is the re-roll. So if you, yeah, if you use the voice for two, you're only going to roll two dice. Because you're sitting okay. on two successes, you've got to now get one success with those two dice. Got it. Can do. The voice is just a more powerful determination. Six and a five. Yes. Whoa, nice. Okay, so... So that's that four, was, six yes. total. So you get uh, three points of momentum and explain to me how this manifests. Um, my fingers move delicately at, hidden behind me against the wall until I find the sweet spot in the cave. And I use the voice to say... Shia Lud wishes for you to obey this duchess in all she commands, and your goals for all Fremen will move forward. Awesome. And all of the Fremen uh, look around. Where is this voice coming from? It feels like it's all around them and inside of them and behind them all at the same time. But the Naib, the leader of their siege, never takes his eyes off of you. Maybe he understands what is happening, but he also understands the power of the Bene Gesserit. So he leads his people in all, slightly taking a knee towards you. <laughs> I allow what? them to do so. <laughs> Pharaoh reads the eyes. room and takes a knee also. Like, <laughs> and... um, I, I. I want to expend a feeling of love. Um, maybe use the ramifications of that voice to send like a pleasant chill down their spine, like reinforcing that they feel good about this choice. And then I say, please rise. We are as one now. 
Thank yes. you for welcoming us. Yes, it is clear that perhaps your Fremen friend was correct. Our paths were meant to cross. What brought you to our seat? We seek one known as Thurman Tyloris. He is in service of the Harkonnens and must be destroyed by our hands. We are not familiar with the politics of the city. This name is unknown to us. What brought you out here seeking this man? What made you think he was in the desert? He smuggles spice. He seeks to take what belongs to you. Yes, there are many smugglers out there. Most we deal with. What else do you know? We know there are Sardaukar in these parts. And I know the Fremen are more powerful than they. Well, that may be true. This is more politics. I suppose the question should be directed towards you. What can we do to aid in what you seek? If perhaps our paths were meant to cross in this way, then you are here to rid us of the new evil that has taken up residence in our land. I do not know if this is connected to this smuggler you speak of or not. But, you see, there are many cave systems connected through the land here. Perhaps the place you seek is the one that we found recently. It is miles underground from here. As the Naib of this siege, it is my job to know these caves better than anyone, labyrinthine though they may be. I know the route to this place that is perhaps the place you seek. But we will not go there. You must. He looks to a couple other people, maybe a second and third in command, and walks towards you and says, uh, Several weeks ago, we discovered a group of outsiders who took up residence in a cave far from here. Perhaps one of these outsiders is this Tyloris you seek. We watched them for a time without their knowing and eventually determined that they should be sacrificed. But then something changed. A new being joined their group. We did not see this person, but their mere presence cast a cloud in our minds, a dark shroud of evil. We noticed that even Shai Alud would not go near when they disrupted the sands with their haphazard movements. Now we do not go that way anymore in the hopes that their stay here will be brief. The water within them is cursed. It will infect our tribe, so it is not ours to spill. If, Fremen, you say you have a greater purpose, then perhaps your purpose is to eliminate them. If it is, as you say, a curse, a curse can be lifted through mystical means as it may be placed. This new being is for me to take on. But the intruders, those who came from outsiders, as you call them, it is your right to sacrifice them and take their water. If they have a connection to this darkness that we feel, we will not go near again, but we will show you the way, and you can go alone. Troy, I really want their backup. <laughs> <laughs> you see the fear in the faces of the Fremen, even as he's speaking about it. 
my people. We are not afraid of much, but the darkness that we felt there, we cannot go. I turn to Corrin. How much threat to form an army? <laughs> <laughs> Ten! No, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's the type of thing where your argument to him was there's something greater going on here, and it involves her. And they're like, I don't know, sounds fremony, but who are you and who are these people? And then Delessa puts on this uh, this big show that the other fremen uh, bow down to, but the naive is wise. He understands what's going on here. He understands that the Bene Gesserit can do this type of thing. It's enough for him to say he's willing to help. He doesn't know this, Ty Loris, but he senses now maybe you're right, Corrin. Maybe we were supposed to meet, but this is not our battle. I just say to him, do not let your fear be your downfall. Either you aid us, or you can sit back and allow your entire civilization to go to ruin at your own hands. He just sits and thinks and then walks up closely to you, Corin. I only need to say the word, and any one of these men and women behind me will challenge you to a duel. Now you may defeat one, two, or even three of them, but they will give their lives for me and for our tribe. Eventually you will fall, and your mission will fail. And why do they not show this bravery towards your biggest threat? Because our path is to wait and watch, and yours is to go to that cave. And perhaps if you succeed, we will meet again when you need us most. Uh, very subtly, without turning, just give a little glance towards Delessa, taking her cue for our action. May we replenish ourselves with your sustenance before we head on to fight on your behalf. We have one box of Little Debbie Oatmeal <laughs> You must split them between you. <laughs> and they'll be on your way. <laughs> they won't be on your way. You flatter us. <laughs> you come. He holds up the box. Throws it at your feet. I recognize the Little Debbie icon as uh, something that Pharos has um, on occasion. Face danced into just for parties. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know that face. The Uts chips girl, the Sunday <laughs> bread kid, all of them. So very well. We can prove ourselves to be worthy allies to you by beholding whatever evil has infected your lands. Whatever this abomination might be. It has come from off-world and those from off your world must confront. Corin just looks down and thinks to herself how disappointed she is that they're not zebra cakes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you hit the nail on the head, Pharos, and, and that's what this really is. It's a prove yourself. Mm-hmm. This All is what we refer to in the business as an audition. <laughs> We are are more than familiar. Showing (laughs) you that we are worthy of your time, your trust. I assure you, you will not be disappointed. 
So you replenish yourselves, you split your pies, and then a group leads you through the caves. You're just walking through these winding caves that every hundred feet or so branch off in ten different directions, but the naive is with you. His name is Ketef Delub, and he's the uh, <laughs> leader of this siege. And he zips through, and you just wonder, how do they know exactly where to go? You don't see any markers. It's just a, a sense that he has. But after traveling for what felt like at least a mile, if not more, he stops and says, That way. Go straight. Do not vary from the path. A few hundred yards or so. You will seek. You will find what you seek. We thank you for your courtesy. And we will prove ourselves worthy of your grace. I bow to him. He bows as well. They turn and disappear into the shadows just as quickly as they came. And you're left facing this long, dark corridor. Guys start heading down. You'll see several places you could turn to the right or the left, but you're really trying to follow the directions. Luckily, you have a Fremen with you who is trained in this type of spelunking, and you continue straight, and eventually you start to see uh, one box and then another box, these crates stacked on top of each other. One of the crates is open and holds a, a single laser gun and uh, two swords. You also see clothing on the ground. Uh, looks like two sets of clothing, uh, both with the insignia of House Tyloris on them. Perhaps the pilots who were disposed of back in Arakeen and had their clothing absconded with found a sandy resting or whoever did the deed sought other sartorial refinements down here. I'll have that laser gun, I think. <laughs> Ferris takes the laser gun. Anybody take the swords? Obviously. Oh heck yeah! Corin has a Chris knife. Uh, um, yeah. But if somebody else wants a, oh yeah, that's right. As you are well armed, I would not mind taking a sword. And as for my ankle, it was passing. Much worse. I thought it was much worse than it was. Yeah, I think. Glad to hear it. I haven't had a chance, I guess, to tell anyone what I saw. Uh, oh, yeah. You could flash back a little bit if you wanted to pull the Duchess aside or say something to Corin. Well, that's what I'm playing it is like, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to say that it's just, I I was looking for, I, I wasn't able to, like, see her get a chance alone without uh, without him there. Yeah. Um, so just, uh, he, he, he still wants to tell her, but. The caverns and just, echoed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you also just saw Pharos pick up a laser gun. Yeah, <laughs> now it's like, okay. this over. I see, I see oh, look shit. in your eyes like, <laughs> now we are prepared. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> it's a rough you situation I've been. Yeah, it's not a great situation because you don't know if from this all started from a betrayal and you still don't know who was the betrayer. Right. Could it be someone as close to you uh, as, as Pharos? Would I know? I wouldn't know any of the kind of hand signaling communication methods uh, right. like the Bene uh, Gesserit yeah uh, I don't know I don't think we communicate in that way because you've said that you are suspicious of me I, I think I probably have a sense of that and I kind of taught uh, Corinna's pillow talk <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> But I th like, I mean, I do have a cultural uh, mm. 
I, I do have like this, and that is one of my specialty would be like uh, communication and techniques. So. Yeah, you probably know more than you let on. You can just go up into your Rolodex and figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I think I want to do, uh, we'll say I know enough to just, uh, when, when, when it's, when I feel it's safe to just kind of get the message across that he's he's not to be trusted in my limited vocabulary it's like he's, he's not, not to be, be tussled <laughs> <laughs> damn it stay away from his hair up ahead around the corner you hear some noise sounds like a creaking like of wood do you guys do anything continue in that direction yeah Three. Uh, is there any outcroppings of rock we could hide behind in this cavern? Yeah, yeah uh, the way it opens up here where these crates are, you could certainly hide behind crates. The sound doesn't seem to be coming towards you. Um, it's in the distance around a bend. So you could wait, hide, feel safe and no one's coming, but you still hear that pop, pop. I nod to Corin. I mean, she's my muscle. Scout ahead. To yeah, lead us. I've got. Uh, I don't. I don't draw the blade, but I instinctually put my hand over it and stealth forward. All right, give me a. Uh, give me a move stealth roll. Mm hmm. With whatever drive you want to use. I would say. Uh, I'm ready to fight. We're we're in war mode. I could I do a power? Sure. Okay. Uh, Did you take the second sword or uh, does a no need no? Because I have a one? sword, so there is one left for. <laughs> Aurelius, you have the sword. <gasps> okay, I rolled a six and a nineteen. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Well, the six gives you two successes. Um. The 19 is not a, uh, not necessarily a uh, complication. Oh, there is a thing in the game, I think, where, like, depending on the stakes, the complication range, kind of like a crit range, goes up. Mm. Oh, yeah, that is, I think that is That true. is one of those things, and, well, let's be honest. It's the end of the episode. Let's ramp it up a little bit. You <laughs> slide forward, and as you do, you see two men dressed in uh, imperial uniforms cranking open a crate. They finish popping it open. They reach inside, and they throw to the ground the partially decomposed body of Dresden Tyloris. Oh, whoa. <gasps> whoa. As they do, another man walks in to look down at the body and looks up and sees you, Corin. <laughs> it's Thurman Tyloris. And he's standing with two Sardaukar soldiers. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, I knew there were Fremen in these parts, but I wasn't expecting you. Are you alone? Why would I ever be alone as I draw my... <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no! We're doing this! So, she, Corin draws the blade. Oh uh, I could be talking the about my... of I, surprise I, is worthless I, to me. I could be talking about my Chris knife. <laughs> Chris is with me. <laughs> Come on, Chris, Chris knife. Knife. <laughs> knife. Chris a knife. Uh, do any of the others, do you walk forward or do you let Corrin uh, stand there alone? Now you don't know there's Sardaukar soldiers, um, but you hear this voice and you hear, uh, you hear, the, you hear several uh, people up there at least. Only one voice. Does anybody else do anything? I think I'm far Oops. enough away that I want to get the drop it on, and I don't want to just say, "Hey, that's <laughs> just uh, here." Corin's <laughs> default mode has come at me, bro. So, okay. I would like to, if I've got the this um, laser gun. gun, I might try to close the distance a little bit to cover her. If uh, if someone comes in, or if she's surrounded, then I can provide some 
snipey backup. All right, so you come around the corner and you've got a laser gun and you see the Sardaukar soldiers and you know that they have shields. And if you know that that laser mm. gun hits those shields, it's going mm. to cause an atomic blast that would kill everyone. Uh, so you'd solve one problem, create mm-hmm. the other problem of <laughs> you all dying. And Thurman sees you as well. And then you hear another voice. Uncle. Uncle. Don't be rude. And Pharos and Corrin, you see Dresden Tyloris walk into Fran. Or someone that looks exactly like Dresden Tyloris. <laughs> That's the Fremen and one of their who knows what set designers or whatever they purport themselves to be. Is the Duchess with you as well? Duchess Houdin! I don't respond. Oh, what a shame. Just the two of you. I was hoping I'd get a chance to meet my future (laughs) wife-to-be. It's truly amazing what the Tleilaxu can accomplish. He walks over to the partially decomposed body of Dresden. He looks just like me, doesn't he? (sighs) I guess I'm a bit more handsome, truth be told. It's a terrible shame. Young Ethan here was always a good friend to me and an even better shield as body double to the heir of House Tyloris. He went through so much surgery to get his face like that. Suffered so much, all for me. He kind of like kicks at the body's head to look at the face. I'm sorry, old friend. You will be missed. And the two of you will be missed as well. It's a shame I never got to meet my wife. And I'm sorry I missed the opera. Never been a big fan, to be honest. A rather silly profession. My parents had the right idea in making this alliance, but truth be told, your duchess friend was a little old for me. Uh You're in? (laughs) But perhaps you'd like to meet the real future duchess, Tyloris. Oh, darling. The real Dresden Tyloris calls back And as he says that, a young woman walks forward from further back in the cave, emerging from the darkness. She has this long black gown on with blue rubies inset throughout. It's almost like a scandalous mix of Bene Gesserit garb and royalty. Hmm. She's stunning. 17, 18 years old. And the thing Pharos and Corin immediately notice as her face comes into the light, she looks almost like a younger Duchess Houdin. She steps forward and says with a fond sadness, Delessa, my dear, I know you're back there. Please come forward. I don't pull the sword, but I do slip the gum jabar into my palm. <laughs> I nod to Aurelius, kind of giving him a stay hidden. Yeah, look. no problem. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> Not an issue, your grace. He's holding the sword like this. With my chin <laughs> held high, enter the room. You enter the room and you see the two Sardaukar soldiers. You see Thurman Tyloris. You see the body of the man you met in your owner's box and you see the real Dresden Tyloris having overheard this entire conversation and you see this beautiful young woman who looks just like you and she smiles with a a sadness in her eyes and she says oh my it is good to see you again my daughter and we'll see you next week. What? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs>
What? 